<laughs> you guys did not see it, but Iona told me <laughs> she was running a little late, so I just mm -hmm. got the stream started, and literally like two seconds before <laughs> the stream went live, I see her face pop up, and I'm just like, oh wow! <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm here, I've been here the whole time. Right? <laughs> so I after all and relax. <laughs> nothing, oh, nothing's no. going on, it's all, come here, butters, oh my god. Nothing goodness. to see here. Come here, come here. <laughs> Butters is now all feisty. She she heard us get all excited, and now she, oh, she brought me a ball. She brought me a ball, of course. Uh, let me see. You're like, I'm here. I just saw your message. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. Indeed, you are. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the live stream. My name is Jenna Rossi. I am a number one Amazon bestselling dark fantasy romance and writing craft author. You can check out my books, um, The Savior Champion and The Savior Sister. They're available at all major retailers. They're award winners. They're bestsellers. I mean, what's not to love? Mm -hmm. um, and you want to check them out soon before the third book comes out, uh, The Savior's Army, which I will be working on today. Uh, if you need help writing your book, which if you're here, you, you probably do, check out my writing craft book, Shut Up and Write the Book. It is also available at all... <laughs> I'm yodeling. It is also available at all major retailers, and it is a really straightforward step-by-step -step guide to uh, writing your novel all the way from the planning phase to, you know, the edit, and it's very helpful, and you should buy it. Um, I also have a sale on merch going down right now. You can get 15% off all of my merch using code FOLKLORE. Um, it's going down um, only for like another week. So go buy my merch. You, you can get really cute stuff. You can get stuff with Butter's face on it. Um, and um, uh, if you are new to my channel, this is my YouTube channel where I give uh, lots of writing and publishing and marketing advice with a hefty dose of sarcasm and dick jokes. Yay. Um, if you are new to these streams, what we do here is we do writing Sprints. That's where we set the timer for about 20 minutes and we write as many words as, possi as uh, possible on our work in progress. Uh, we will not be providing a prompt for you. You're going to work on whatever writing project you're working on right now. And if you are not in the drafting phase, that's okay. You can edit as for the 20 minutes. You can critique, you can beta read, or you could do homework or do something else that you need to get done. The idea is we're all going to be productive together and we love it. And then afterward, we will share our progress and answer writing questions. We also have a game planned for today per popular request. We are going to be playing two truths and one lie. Um, so be prepared to learn uh, weird things about me and Iona. Uh, now, speaking of, Iona, introduce yourself. Hello, it's me. Totally here on time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm a dark fantasy author of Ashes. You can get that in ebook and paperback uh, formats and on Amazon in audiobook format, it's in on Audible. And I also am taking a nice long hiatus from it, but if you're interested in creepy cozy stuff, then you can listen to my podcast, Creepy Core and Folklore. Um, also, if you haven't seen our interview on Jenna's yeah. channel, we did one all about folklore. So if you like hearing about like certain creepy things and then like a bunch of people were commenting like some of the most horrendous um, uh, folklore they know of in the comments, which I thought was wonderful. Where they're like, oh, you should read this. Or they're like, oh, you should read this if you have it about all like the worst folklore. I thought that was like a fun thing to read through the comments. Yes. With. And then, oh my gosh, I feel like, oh, and I also do crystal ball readings. Here are some of my crystal balls. Um, yes. There's one more back over here somewhere. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, and we both have merch. But you already said that. Yours is on sale. The folklore sale. I'm just going to uh, warn everyone, I, my allergies are always bad, but they're especially bad lately because Butters is going through her molting. yearly shed. <laughs> yeah, molting. Uh, so, like, there's hair on my lip right now. Um, I'm not allergic to her, but I'm, you know, I'm, like, alert. like, I'm very, my asthma is aggravated by dust and mm -hmm. hair is part of Dander. the dust. Yeah. Yeah. So, fuck me, Whenever right? you're like, you're like, there's hair on my lip, I'm like, oh, yeah, me too, but mine's a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> well the only reason that's not the case for me is because i had my lasered off which i highly oh, recommend nice. everyone if you if you uh you're getting older and you're getting the the fuzz just laser it off it's not oh. as painful as um other parts of the body um the legs the knees the upper thigh the inner thigh that's mm. more painful than the bikini line the inner thigh really that's not what i would have guessed Oh, thumbs, thumbs up. up. You didn't even give a thumbs up. The ghost right. is giving a thumbs up. Yeah, that's the that was that was so painful. That's the part where I felt like I was being tortured. But you know what doesn't hurt at all? Mm. 
the chinny chin. Well, that's because it's like the closer to the bone it is, but if it's like closer to more meat, then it's not. Yeah, it's like if, it, but, but it, right here, like when they do your upper lip, yeah, then, this is very spicy, but it's like just it's only like five zaps and then you're done. Okay. But here, oh, I was thinking about getting those handheld ones where you're like mm -hmm. zip, 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 and you like laser yourself, but I don't know. I got. Well, I got one one time and it was expensive. It was like $500 and it didn't work. So now I see all those Noom products everywhere. And, mm. and or, no, I, is it Noom or is it? Well, that's Noom. one of them. It's either Noom or Noon, whatever, but it's yeah. something. But yeah. I see those everywhere on Instagram and I'm just like, that's not the one I got. So maybe oh, that okay. one works. Um, but I'm just like, I don't trust you, bitch, because I had, I had the at home. Ones. I invested. And, yeah. I've, <laughs> Five hundred dollars and it did not work. And mm -hmm. also, they they all say it's painless, and it was just as painful as getting it professionally done. So yeah, I don't I don't trust laser. any of them who say it's painless because I've done the at home version. It fucking hurt. So, mm -hmm. and I have a high pain tolerance because trauma. So, mm -hmm. anywho, all right, folks. Um, let's see. Let's go and dive into some questions. Give me one second. Questions. Uh, uh, one second. Oh, I saw that Candy wants my giant tumbler. This is my anti anti Stanley stance. <laughs> where um, it's called a Sir Sip, and it's <laughs> way less money. It's crazy to me that it's like that a water bottle is trending. Like this is like I'm so old that I'm one of these people who's like, why? Like it's kind of like when the the boomers were like, why are stuffed animals trending with Beanie Babies? And I I had a hundred over a hundred Beanie Babies, so I can't talk. But like to me, it's like it's a water bottle. Uh, yeah, you can get it at the dollar store, you know. But you, the fact that you need the trendy one, it's very weird. Okay, let me see. I'm trying to get caught up on the comments. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to get caught up too. Uh, okay. You can share. Okay, this is not true. Uh, no, no, I'm not saying that you're wrong. It depends on the type of laser you're getting. Um, oh, there's more and less intense lasers. Yes, and okay. um. The that and also it depends on the part of the body um uh -huh. because certain parts of the body are more uh sensitive than others mm -hmm. like inner thighs obviously that's where pleasure mm -hmm. zones are and stuff like that mm -hmm. um so this isn't super accurate i say this as someone who got the intense there's there's types of lasering where you have to do it continuously for a long time and then um it uh you know like you know, you, it's like a continual maintenance thing. And then there are other lasers where it's permanent and there's a level of intensity involved there. Um, as someone who I got like, you know, like my back done, not to be gross or anything. And it wasn't painful at all because uh -huh. you have fewer nerve endings in the back. And then I that got my, my legs done and it was extremely painful. So this is false information um so uh yes there are see there we go yeah so so that that's not to say you're wrong it's just it really depends on the type of laser and everything um okay okay sorry i'm, I'm... crystals that's so interesting yeah Too. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Um, does my second book in a series have to ha be the same character or can it follow a different character at a different location to be tied into book three? Um, uh, well, thank you, first of all, for the super chat. It depends yeah, on a, a multitude of factors. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. It depends <laughs> on a multitude of um, uh, factors. It depends on the genre you're writing. It depends on the promise you've made to the reader. Like if you're writing, like if you're writing an episodic series, this is to often to be expected because a lot of episodic series follow different characters. Mm -hmm. Um, it, 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 it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's not something that I can just easily answer because it, it depends on a lot of factors for what it's worth. The savior champion follows one character and the savior sister follows a different one. So mm -hmm. I've done it. So it's definitely possible. It's just, I can't tell you, um, I can't tell you yes or no for sure. Cause I don't know the nuances of your story. What say you, Iona? 
Um, I'm doing that right now where my sequel um, is following, it's episodic and it's following a different character, but I'm also keeping in mind that it's like maybe in the background or like peripherally answering some questions or continuing certain storylines. Like I have an overarching storyline for the uh, entire series. So okay. yeah. So as long as it's cohesive and then depending on your genre and how it'll sell and things like that, you can totally do it. Awesome. Okay. I don't know anything about this, so I'm going to let Iona take this question away. Okay. Do you think that detailed depictions of CSA are inherently pedophilic? I know it's a strong topic, but I had a mini convo with my friends about it, and I want to know your takes. Okay. So um, the thing to keep in mind is that it can be very powerful to include CSA in a book, but you have to make sure you're not hurting anybody in the process of it. So um, like, and I don't mean characters, I mean your readers, your readership. And that doesn't even mean if you get it tr like traditionally or indie published, that can also mean um, any kind of form of readership that you have, including friends. So one in, oh, I used to know the numbers for this, but one in five designated male at birth folks uh, undergo CSA and one of three designated female at birth folks uh, experience CSA before the age of 18 and I think that it's just like important to know that there's a huge group of survivors out there that will be reading it so that being said that's my caveat um it's there are many different ways that you could depict this um I would suggest reading books that have it but like are recognized by the survivor community as not being harmful or portraying harmful stereotypes of survivorship or putting excess pressure on survivors to be okay too because that's another one that happens so i feel like if you wanted to read something like oh okay you would have to be careful when reading it but lolita is one that's told from the predator's perspective but it starts breaking down why he's an, uh, an unreliable narrator and the grooming process. If you wanted to go more from the grooming side of things, um, if you wanted it to show it from a survivor perspective, I think my dark Vanessa is a good one for that, but also keep in mind, these are very, very triggering books and um, like just have a good headspace when you're reading them. Um, oh, I know there was another one. Also, I would suggest doing lots of research into childhood trauma, um, and particularly for, for SA during childhood. Um, and it would be beneficial if you read about like trauma books that include childhood trauma in it. Um, wonderful that I will always talk about. I always, although I always mess up her name. Hold on, let me. Sandra Paulson. Is it Sandra Paulson, Doctor, or is it Sarah Paulson? It's Dr. Sandra Paulson, and she has um, two books that I love, even though they're intense. One is called Looking Through the Eyes of, Tra um, of Trauma and Dissociation, and she has another one called When There Are No Words. The trauma and dissociation talks a lot about childhood trauma, but how it shows up in adult clients um, or people, because it's also made for uh the layman to look at, but also when there are no words is talking about pre-verbal trauma. And also depending on where your brain is at the time of the grooming or the um, like any kind of essay or the aftermath of it, like depending on where, how much your brain has developed, it will affect you a different way. So my long story short is that make sure you read up about it. Definitely, definitely, definitely make sure if you decide to publish it that you have, um, a uh, sensitivity reader um, and make sure you read, you read books that depict what you're trying to depict in a like healthy way that like is nuanced. So those are my tips. My only thing that I would add is just personal perspective, which is that I don't like reading books that have essay period, let alone CSA. Mm -hmm. So for me, I wouldn't provide detailed descriptions of any essay just because I don't like reading that as a reader. It, for me, it's in like an automatic DNF, but that's just me, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like not necessarily a reliable person to talk about this with. I hear you. Uh, yeah. How are you both? Um, 
you know what? I actually have a detailed answer for this. So I am doing well overall, aside from the, geez, I'm going like, I'm, I, I feel, I feel the snedging happening. Um, <laughs> Um, bingo cards. Right, yeah, guys. If you're in Cyber Central, bingo cards is pinned in general. But anywho, um, I'm doing well overall. There's a lot of like really good, exciting things happening for me. Mm-hmm. However, I've like a uh, Cliff has been having horrible nightmares. So mm. um, like really intense nightmares, which is like normal oh, for going through EMDR. Um, <sighs> So he's not sleeping at night, which means my sleep is affected too, as well. And I'm also having really horrible nightmares. Um, not as bad as his, but my it's just that they're extremely vivid. Although yeah. I did have one nightmare last night that was super graphic and like someone got literally all their teeth pulled out. But anywho, um, <laughs> Sorry, joyful. I pull something out of um, Kachu's mouth. I'm not sure. I thought you were going to say his butt and I was like. No, <laughs> that, that peering in was definitely his mouth, not the okay. other <laughs> But I just didn't mean to be like, <laughs> yeah, off to the side. And I was just like, what is that? He was like, kind of like, ugh. it was a fuzzy, but anyway, sorry, keep going. I'm so sorry. That's okay. But uh, basically, I've been having really bad nightmares. And I think it's because, you know, being having CPTSD and everything for a long time, we were living in survival mode. And it was just every day, it was just get through the day, get through the day, like survival. And now we are finally in a place where we can transition into living like, like not surviving but living and so like I'm at a place now where I can like cook more often and like I can um go like ride the bike and you know like I do the normal things that people take for granted um and I feel like my brain is um going wait no this is you can't do that it's dangerous you know like we're in survival mode like I'm I'm starting to like let loose and and like loosen up and do things that normal people do and my brain is oh wait something's gonna happen so i think that's why i'm having all the nightmares um but uh i i think this is just like you know the only way out is through like i just have to keep going through it and yeah you know it will get better because like what happens is your brain is like wait pump the brakes and it's like oh wait nothing was there and then it does enough times that it's like actually i think it's okay yeah so Cliff, poor Cliff, you know, he's sleeping right now because he only got two hours of sleep last night. So, and I slept, but like, I'm talking so much in my sleep. I'm like, yelling, fuck you, get away from me. And Cliff was like, you have lots of nightmares last night. I'm like, yeah, I know. I remember. But, but like, I just feel him tap me and he's like, Jenna, you're having a nightmare. I'm like, thank you. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're all fucked up in the sleep department, but I think, I think it is a shitty side effect of like a good thing that like things are improving Mm -hmm. overall. And I have really big, exciting things going on that I want to tell you guys, but I can't yet. Okay. Iona, how about you? Um, I'm scheduled surgery to get, or I'm going to schedule surgery to get my gallbladder removed and I'm having a lot of medical things answered. Mm -hmm. Um, So this year, because I turned 30 and because uh, I don't know, it's like the new year. I was like, I'm going to like focus on health. Like I, I'm, I'm going to like not like if I'm afraid, I'm just going to do it afraid. Like I'm just going to like solve all the mysteries of my body basically. And I got a lot of answers all at once. Like I was like advocating and advocating and hitting all these barriers. And then like, boom, within like two weeks, I had like a shit ton of answers. And now I have two more things I need to follow up on. But uh, one big thing is that I need my gallbladder removed and I was told to remove it nine years ago and I didn't listen. And <laughs> <laughs> now, now it really, 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 really needs to go. So we get rid of it. Run. Yeah. We're <laughs> celebrating removing Yay. the gallbladder from hell. <laughs> yeah. It was funny because whenever they were doing like the sonogram to look at my gallbladder, they're like, wow, you're like packed full of gallstones. And I was like, ew, but also... <laughs> wow that's crazy. <laughs> and, and so we were like me and the the sonogram person were like joking it was like they told us we wouldn't last but it's been nine years but now i'm sorry but i have to say goodbye and then she was like this this relationship has gotten toxic <laughs> <laughs> i wonder if they'll let you see the stones after because so, okay do- all right <laughs> i'm gonna be really gross if anyone squeamish just like like mute it for just a second earmuffs yeah, earmuffs it. I feel like I worked really hard to make the gallstones. <laughs> and I want them. 
And yeah. I found out that they are like literal rocks. Like it's yeah. not just like a they're an actual like stone. Mm -hmm. And you can get them and rock tumble them. Like that's how stone like they are. That's how that's how much of a rock they are. Right. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool because the cholesterol ones look like a tiger's eye when you like rock tumble them and then the pigmented ones look like onyx basically or like a black marble so i was like can i like keep them and then i was like you know what i'm not the only weird one out here uh there are other people like who turn them into jewelry like you can mail your gallstones to people they'll turn it into jewelry and send it back to you i'm like this will be like my big thing so there are two things that i wanted today one was to schedule my surgery and the other one was to get my gallstones <laughs> and, like have confirmation that i could keep them and i was told no for both of those things and, no! and i was like i was gonna say you could at the very least have like a bowl and it's like oh look at these colorful jewels and like a centerpiece jewels i made them <laughs> <laughs> and you're like thank you that came from my body <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm just like, I don't know, it was just so bad. And then the surgeon was a really sweet and she was like, I know, this is so disappointing. <laughs> She's like, I know, this is so disappointing. She's like, if it's any consolation. Because I think you have to be weird to be a surgeon. You have to be into that weird stuff. Yeah. So she's like, if it's any consolation, yours is like pea gravel. And it's not very big. And some of it, your body has tried to break down. So it's basically like sand. And I was Aww. like, that does make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but I was told no. And yeah, they have yeah. to also like, whenever they take anything out of your body, I didn't know this, but they always have to send it to pathology just mm -hmm. to make sure there's nothing like cancerous or like right. anything else going on, which I'm like, yeah, I would like, you know, the confirmation that this is what we think it is. Right. Um, but uh, they were like, but then they dispose of it. And I was like, it's fine. I only worked nine years to make them, but that's fine. <laughs> Maybe they'll just give you a certificate instead. I Cert made gallstones. You made 1,001 gallstones. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, let's see. I'm writing a series romance and they only get to the romance in the later book. Should I still mm. market series as fantasy romance? You can't um, in good faith market the series as fantasy romance because, I mean, people are going to read book one and be like, this is a fantasy romance and then there's no romance in it. You're yeah. making a promise that you can't deliver. So what you can do is market it as a fantasy series yep. and then as, let's say, they get together in book four, you can market book four as a fantasy romance. Does that make sense? You can have the series evolve, but you can't say it's a fantasy romance from the start if nothing romantic happens. It's like... It's 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 a bait and switch, basically. People, you'll get lots of bad reviews and people will be mad. What say you? Um, I was going to say the same thing. Um, and it's very, just know it's normal that like your genres change within a, well, just what Jenna was saying, where it's like, this is a fantasy series. And it's like book one, fantasy. Book two, dark fantasy book three fantasy romance like that all like can go yeah. together and it's it's still cohesive so right. that's okay to do that that's not unheard of that's pretty like typical. like yeah like like i'd say the savior's army is less dark fantasy than um the yeah. savior's champion and savior sister it's more epic fantasy yep. um but that's a subcategory so it's okay it's not it's not a big deal if yeah. i went from fantasy romance to horror that would be weird you that know would be weird. so yeah, yeah. Even though I would think you'd write a bomb ass like horror book. It's funny because I really enjoy thrillers, but like I have no concept of how to write them. So I'm like Maybe that's why you like them. Because yeah. like you kind of like can't break them down into smaller, smaller parts. You like really enjoy them because you like kind of don't know. Cause like I can't I guess, nitpick as much. Yeah, yeah, you can't nitpick. Because like the more I know about certain genres, I'm just like Yeah. Looking at from like a critique like a constructive type of thing instead of like a I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I hate most fantasy romance books that I read. <laughs> that's fair. But also, I, some are really bad. Well, the thing is, is, that's the problem when something's on trend, is everyone hops on and, you know, and it, there's lots, of, there's lots of garbage to sift through, you know? And um, so, yeah, I, 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 and then people will, we, I was just talking to Lefty about this, like people will just rave about a series and then you're just like, what the fuck, you know, and you, and then you just question everyone's judgment. So it's like, yeah, I, I, fantasy romance used to be my favorite series and now it's becoming less and less so because it's so on trend that 
there's so much stuff being pumped out and it's just so hard to the sift through the sea of diarrhea to find the the gallstone no <laughs> it can come out in your poop sometimes so really? that's, totally, that's totally that's totally relatable oh yeah. my goodness okay uh how do you write the fun trauma response respectfully Ooh. I don't understand yeah. this, so go for it. I don't know about respect. I like. I I don't know what you mean by saying respect. Yeah, that's what I don't get. I'm like, yeah, what, but you know. the fawn respond. Oh, do you mean like don't make your your cl er, client? Wow, <laughs> don't make your character look manipulative because fawning is manipulative, but right. that doesn't mean they're bad. Does right. it? Hopefully, that makes sense. So, like, fawning is when, well, there's fight flight. Freeze, fawn, and fidget. Now there's fidget. And so... And uh, now you're like... <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you're stimming up a storm over there. Right. <laughs> but um, fawning is, is when you try and placate another person through real or perceived threat. So it is manipulative to do that because you're literally manipulating the situation. But it still benefit like it clearly benefited the person at some point or they wouldn't use fawn as a response mm -hmm. you know like it, it's subconscious but still it's like the the body wouldn't have chosen the brain wouldn't have chosen fawn unless it had worked for them mm -hmm. so i think you can write fawn just fine but also if you want to include character development character growth and stuff recognizing that it like dooms relationships because they're not getting to know the real person they're getting to know the person that like let's say i'm the fawner mm -hmm. and pretend jenna's a normal person <laughs> i didn't mean it to sound like <laughs> pretend jenna's like a character and i'm the <laughs> fawning character when i when i'm talking i jenna's not getting to know me she's getting to know the person that i presume that she wants to meet that's mm -hmm. not actually me. So there's never going to be a relationship that works from this something This sounds so familiar. Up. Yeah. <laughs> we may have just gone through something like this with somebody. But hopefully they figure it out. But it's sad to live like that. And so I think that would be a really cool thing to read yeah. about somebody who starts off as a fawner and then realizing, like, there's no, it's not sustainable for, like, yeah. long-term and healthy relationships. Yeah. Agreed. Sorry, my assistant texted me. No, that's totally fine. I just think it's funny that supervillains like pretend Jenna's normal. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean to say that. <laughs> I'm getting ready to publish my debut and I am so nervous about it. On a scale of one to ten, how nervous were you before we published yours? I feel like we covered this uh the last time, but um very nervous. Yeah. I basically had to be drunk the entire release week because I was panicking mm -hmm. and I kept um crying. I was very nervous. Yeah. So it's that's that a sense. normal feeling. You're releasing a piece of art that took you years to create to the masses. If you weren't nervous, I would be worried. I would be worried that you're one of those overconfident people who you're going to get a lot of one star reviews and then you're going to post a rant online like people don't appreciate my genius. I'm my art. I'm, I'm ahead of my time, you know. And <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, I was really nervous. Um, I felt like a fraud. Then I would go through these periods of time where I came up with the uh, the word for it. I was like, last last uh, stream, I was like, oh, I don't know. It wasn't apathy, but it was like a weird, like distant feeling. But it was shock. I kept yeah. going through shock where I was like, did I publish it? Like, did it happen? I guess it did. Like, just not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think people wait for like some kind of big moment to happen and then it doesn't. And you're just like, what? No, it's just horrifying. Yeah. But it's thrilling. At the same yeah. time. Uh, why multiple crystal balls? Oh, okay. So depending on what they're made out of, they'll show you different things. So like this black one is made out of obsidian. Mm -hmm. I should know if it's made out of obsidian or not. But I think it's made out of obsidian. And um, it has like a little paper that I'll check out. But it's for grounding and like, um, like protection. And then there's another one that over there that's... Um, smoky quartz that's also for grounding and protection but i noticed that it does a good job of predicting people's like career goals like those kinds of things and then each of the crystal balls to me and i'm gonna sound a little funky 
but I feel like they just predict different things. Like, mm -hmm. and if I'm doing crystal ball readings for people, there'll be like a certain crystal ball that seems to be the one with the answers for that person or the suggestions for that person, I should say. So yeah, that's why. Also, they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay. Is there a recommended number of books in a debut series, like a duology, trilogy, typically more successful, or should you write as many books as it takes? Um, so typically, it's recommended that your debut novel be a standalone. Um, obviously, that's not doable for everyone. Um, so if you're writing a debut series, I don't think it really matters how many books are in the series. Just be realistic of the fact that you might not be able to you might, especially with the debut, you might not end up finishing the series. So just go into it realistically, knowing that you might have to jump ship, um, which is why standalones are typically recommended as a debut book. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's however many, I mean, if you're going to debut with a series, you're going to debut with a series. Um, it's however many books, I guess, you need to tell that series. Just be realistic about the fact that you might not depending on the publishing path and how things turn out, be realistic that you might not end up finishing that series. Mm -hmm. What say you, Iona? Um, I am going to say the same thing. They always suggest that it's standalone, but also that you can change your mind. Like um, Ashes was supposed to be a standalone. And then my readership was like, how dare <laughs> there be no more. And I was like, okay, I can, I have more threads that I could follow for this. Um, so yeah, you can, but it, it's better to do a, <laughs> standalone mm -hmm. just to get your foot in the door there what is your opinion of marriage of convenience i like it it's one of my uh more favorite tropes i've only you? read one like that and i liked it i yeah. think it's cool yeah and and like anything with like arranged marriages which I, I don't know if that necessarily counts as like marriage of convenience but yeah like getting to know somebody after afterward or like marrying to like increased trade or something right yeah i i really like it because it's yeah. like unconventional yeah i enjoy it hello could you i see your little whiskers <laughs> what are your thoughts about books that is separate from the main series but relevant so your talk this is called um prequels and um whatnot for example a book about how the villain became evil my thoughts are I'm not a fan personally, um, but you can totally do it. That's just my personal opinion. I'm not, I particularly dislike prequels. Prequels are not for me. Mm -hmm. That said, um, the negative aspect of writing kind of adjacent books within a series is that you cannot link them on Amazon. Oh, or that's other, right. You can't link them on other buying sites. So these books typically sell far worse than the rest of the series because when they pull up the series, it's not going to show you these adjacent books. Mm -hmm. So a lot of readers are not going to know those books exist. So just keep in mind, like if you're like very passionate about the story and you really want to tell this story mm -hmm. and you don't care how it sells, then go for it. But if this is a marketing tactic, it's a shitty one because it's very like I had planned to write a book of short stories uh, from various, you know, situations of the savior series. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was kind of like, oh, another way to hook readers. And then when I realized that, it, the odds of it selling were really bad. I was like, well, mm -hmm. I'm not going to waste my time, you know? Yeah. yeah. What say you? Um, yeah, just everything you said about it and that I always forget about the whole prequel thing, like not being able to be linked up. And also I think sometimes, I don't know, people seem to think that prequels are like n not, <sighs> prequels are supposed to be read in the order that you wrote them. Mm -hmm. not that you're supposed to like suddenly read the prequel first. Right. I think people think that that's how, so it could be a reader magnet though for like a, um, yeah. A, oh my gosh. Newsletter. newsletter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. What's the typical word count for a young adult dark fantasy? I don't know. Let's Google it. Google it. Word I'm count. It. young. Adult. I'm waiting for you to Google it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, guys, Google is free. Okay. It says um, 75, thousand to a hundred and ten thousand words that's longer than i thought for the um, 110 is longer than i thought the, yeah it, it, fantasy is always a little bit longer than mm. um than contemporary and the average young adult just young adult contemporary is 60 to 90 that, yeah. so it's a little bit longer but yeah that guys when all else fails google is your friend and google knows more than i do let's see that's like whenever I didn't know what like a light novel was for like a long time. I still don't totally. 
And I thought it just meant a short novel. And it does not mean that. And I had to I, isn't that. a light novel like an anime? Yes, thing? but it's like in written, like it's in yeah. novel form. Yeah, it's not. There's no pictures, so I still don't totally understand. What. <laughs> yeah, I don't like anime, so I heard anime and just noped out. It was yeah, it's like a manga, but no pictures. But that's definitely not exactly what it is. So don't listen to me. Um, how much is too much when depicting gore and blood for an audience that may include middle grade? So, um, it's not like may or may not yeah, include right. middle grade. Is your audience middle grade or is it not? You know what I mean? Um, for example, if, if what you mean is I'm writing young adult, but sometimes middle grade people read young adult, you're writing young adult, you know, if, if middle grade people pick it up, that was their choice, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you've done your due diligence by labeling it as young adult. Mm -hmm. However, if you were writing middle grade, it's not that your audience may include middle grade. It, it's that your audience is middle grade. Mm -hmm. um, so there shouldn't be any gore in middle grade. There can be like fight scenes and injuries, but not there's a difference between, you know, he slashed at me, you know, with his sword versus his sword ripped through my flesh and blood splattered across the battlefield. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're not going to get graphic with the gore because this is a kid's book, you know? Um, but that said, if you're writing young adults, you can get a bit more graphic. Um, but you know, it's not going to be like, um, you know, entrails spilled out of his open gut and splattered to the floor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's levels. Um, but again, you need to determine who your target audience is and write for that. Cause I mean, like I write adult books, it's possible a child will pick up my adult book, but at the end of the day, it's an adult book, you know, mm -hmm. like it, that's, that's how it's marketed. That's who it's written for. And it's mm -hmm. not my job to cater to children when I've clearly labeled this book as adult. Yep. Um, but if you are labeling this book as middle grade, it's not, it may include middle grade kids. It's like, that's, that's who you're writing for. So gotta be on it. Um, what say you? Um, I was thinking if you do decide to write middle grade, um, there's this book called that I won't shut up about. It's called Pet uh -huh. <laughs> by Akweke Amezi. Um, and they're a non-binary author. Um, and they have uh, a lot of depictions of like really intense scenes, some very serious information. Their CSA discussed often, but like off page, but like implied very very well written it covers a lot of really in-depth really difficult topics so if you do decide to read or sorry write middle grade then i would suggest reading a book like that so you see where the boundaries are of like what's included and what isn't very very good if you write a romance series do they have to get together at the end of book one or is it enough that the romance is evolving to market the first book as a romance it depends they don't have to get together at the end of book one but they need to have gotten together does that make sense? Um, so for example, the example I like to use a lot is um, the Bridge Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, in book one, they have sex. Um, they mm -hmm. come together as a couple. They realize that they're in love. But at the end, she betrays him and they're broken up. So it, they it's okay that they're not a couple anymore at the end of book one, because by the end of the series, they are a couple and they get their happily ever after. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that in book one, there was some romantic climax, pun intended. Okay. Now that's not to say your characters have to fuck in book one, but they have to get together and they have to get, and I don't mean like their hands brushed or like they went, they flirted. There needs to be some kind of, we are together element whether they are together in a relationship or they're together in love or they have sex or some, something monumental needs to happen in terms of the romance. So if the first book is just them flirting and it's will they, won't they the whole time, I don't think readers are going to buy that as a romance because nothing ever comes of it. Uh, the whole point of a romance is to watch the romantic relationship evolve into a romantic relationship and flirting is not a romantic relationship. Okay. So I, I hope that makes sense. So no, they don't have to be happily ever after at the end of the book one, but they had to have established some type of relationship at some point. Um, 
or some type of romance at some point. Um, and if they break up and then get back together in book two, or maybe they fall in love and they're together, but then one gets kidnapped. And so now they're estranged. So, you know, like, and then they, they reunite in book two, like you could do something like that, but there needs to be some established romantic relationship in book one. I hope I'm making sense. Uh, what say you? I was just going to say, listen to what Jenna <laughs> says, because you are the romance queen. Um, and I don't know the ins and outs of the parameters for that. So that's good that you said it. Okay, cool. How do you decide if your character will have magical powers or not? Oh no, Rory, <laughs> this is your book. Yeah. You have to make it up and then ask your husband. Yeah, like, I don't know. Are you even writing a fantasy? Like how are we supposed, you decide the character has magical powers if you want the character to have magical powers and if they need to have magical powers for the book. Like we can't you tell you how we to make the brain you. go. Yeah. <laughs> we have faith that you will figure this out. But I also understand the question because you're like, I don't. Hey, the decisions. <laughs> but ultimately you'll feel a lot better about your book whenever you are the one that makes all the decisions. Cause it's yours. Yeah. We can't decide this for you. Like, you, and this is the fun part, you know? Yeah. Embrace the fun. Embrace the fun. I would never let someone else create my magic system. I'd be like, fuck you. This is mine. Um, let's I, see. But also side note, I disagree with flipping a coin or rolling a dice or whatever. I disagree. It's more fun if you have agency yeah. over your work. Personally, that's what I, I would I would sit with it and be mm -hmm. uncomfortable and not let fate decide. I would decide myself. Okay, that's my tangent. Opinions on Fifty Shades of Grey and Twilight. We all know it's shit, but how bad is it really? Okay, so admittedly, I haven't read either for obvious reasons. Um, I've read sections, you know, like... I read Twilight okay. back in when it was popular. I was like in it. Okay. Not a fan, but in it. Yeah. <laughs> so I've read sections, like I've read, you know, scenes and chapters, and that was enough for me. Um, what I will say is um, I have a bigger problem with Twilight than I do Fifty Shades, um, because Twilight was written for young adults. It was written for teenagers, and it um, romanticizes a lot of um, really um, abusive um relationship elements yeah and once and obviously um romanticizing abuse has been really popular especially among male writers for a long time but not to like defend horrible male writers but their audience was usually adult and we would hope that adults have a bit more you know brain power to like you know to read what they're writing and like analyze it but younger people their brains are not fully developed and they do internalize a lot of what they read um and I do know a number of people who read Twilight, Love Twilight, and then said, you know, I learned a lot of shit in Twilight that led me into abusive relationships, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, Twilight was the pebble in the water that started the spread of romanticizing abuse in young adult fiction. I have a really big problem with that. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are like saying, we were so hard on Stephanie Meyer and look, there's so much worse stuff out now. Um, we should have been nicer to her. In my opinion, she started it. So to me, it's like, she's the reason there's all this worse stuff out. So I'm kind of like, fuck her. As for Fifty Shades of Grey, it is very poorly written. Um, and it did kind of start the trend of rebranding. Um, fan fiction to. Yeah, but, like, but, speci but specifically, I want to say like poorly written fan fiction. Because some fan fiction mm -hmm. out there is like very well written, you know. Mm -hmm. But poorly oh, yeah. written fan fiction into like published novels um so it did start a shitty trend as well however the difference is 50 shades of gray was written for adults mm -hmm. and i would hope that the you know I, I have less of a problem when people like i i don't enjoy romanticized abuse in fiction but i'm also 37 and i can like read it and be like eh, you know and, and know that it's not like i i can i can recognize it as abuse um and I would assume that a lot of adults can as well. Unfortunately, not all. Some adults are stupid. Um, but the idea is this is written for adults, and we would hope that they have the analytical skills to know that I'm enjoying Fifty Shades, but what this relationship is doing is weird, you know? Um, so I have less of a problem when people romanticize abuse in adult fiction um, because I don't think it's as ethically wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't enjoy it as a reader, but I don't think there's as much of an ethical yeah, problem. Yeah, because people can, like, decide at, like, exactly. in consent to Thank what you. they're <laughs> you, you explained it, but, but yeah. Like, 
but yeah. yeah, so I have a bigger problem with Twilight because it's for younger people who are not as look at Kachu, so who are, <laughs> who are not as like cognitively developed and they really internalize what they see. So yeah, that's my thoughts, my thoughts are going to be completely taken from. I highly suggest, and I'm going to include it right now. One is by Princess Weeks. She talks about developing minds while reading the book, who, why certain people are drawn to it, that kind of thing. Um, and then ContraPoints did an excellent one from a sexual perspective. And she actually was talking about how, um, oh, I forget the name, the like where Vada Strippers started and then like why morality and purity were combined and why it's like oh why people are drawn to certain things and why children are like are being exposed to certain things like it was really well done so i'm gonna look at i'm gonna send everybody that one in the chat as well cool um twilight contra points but i suggest watching both of them they were excellently excellently done um let's see there's that one and then there's uh, this one so well done Princess Weeks and ContraPoints, very good. Awesome. But they go into more in depth about like what co what's concerning about it, what's liberating about it, why certain people are drawn to it, why certain people are disgusted by it, why some people are in the middle. Like it really, really delves into all of that stuff. So I think that's a good one to watch. Awesome. Do you have any critiques on how some romances have portrayed sex and trauma? Um, obviously, uh, I. <sighs> Romance as a whole, I think, is a very important genre because it's one of the only genres that's mostly geared toward women and it guarantees, it's supposed to guarantee happiness. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of the genre is that women get treated with the respect they deserve and the love they deserve. And then people shit on it and say, oh, it's unrealistic. It's like, wow, yeah, it's unrealistic for someone to love a woman and treat her right. Wow, maybe mm -hmm. you are the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I think romance gets a, a lot of unnecessary hate, but that's, you know, the patriarchy for you. Um, that said, uh, I my problems with the romance genre are, um, I'm trying to think of a way to put it. A lot of people have moved, like a lot of a lot of writers have abandoned what the romance genre is supposed to be about, and they've just turned it into smut, which I am totally cool with smut in my writing and everything, and smut in the books that I read. But romance is supposed to be about a fulfilling romantic relationship that may or may not feature smut. And erotica is supposed to be about a fulfilling sexual relationship that may or may not feature romance. And I think people have blurred the lines between erotica and romance because erotica doesn't need to be romantic. Um, the, the hero doesn't need to be a good guy. Um, he could be a dick. It's fine. The idea is that it's about getting off, you know? And I'm seeing a lot of books being marketed as romance when really they're erotica. And it's like the, the main the main male character is a fuck boy or he's abusive or he's predatory. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying guy because I see this more often in um, heterosexual romance novels. I have seen it in some lesbian one as, ones as well, which is like, let's, I was talking about this with Lefty too. It's like, let's take all the, the predatory features of male characters and put them into a woman. Um, but mm -hmm. all that to say is uh, my concern with the genre is when people forget like what the point of romance was supposed to be. It's about, supposed to be about a functional, fulfilling romantic relationship that ends in a happily ever after or happy for now. And a lot of people are like, it's about smashing and, you know, and it's like, you know, and, and, and it's totally fine if you want to put your kinks and stuff into it. But mm -hmm. if all you are looking for is just smut and nothing romantic, erotica's right there, right that. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, I think more writers need to realize that the dark romance subgenre exists and their work needs to be labeled as that because a mm -hmm. lot of people are just saying that they're writing like a rom-com but the you know male hero is predatory and it's like that's what dark romance is for it's for the people who want to read about stalkers and kidnappers and things like that mm -hmm. um that's and not that's, that's something that contrapoints talks about oh okay well <laughs> The cat didn't fall. So that's what's important. <laughs> but that's why something that ContraPoints talk, talks about is where she was going into like, like why there are certain kinks and stuff or in books and how mm. they're symbolic of other things. But it's okay that you're interested in that. I'm right. so sorry. I'm like, 
a mess right now. Okay. I, I just, for me, I'm sick of reading a book that promises to be a romance and it's, and it's literally not. just fucking and there's nothing romantic. I read one where the guy is literally a fuck boy and like he, he doesn't oh, do, I remember he, this one. He doesn't do a single nice thing for the woman. He is constantly giving her issues. And I'm just like, this isn't a romance. This is, if anything, this is a drama, you know? <laughs> it's, yes. Yeah. So, so I just wish that people kind of like understood what, like it lets, I have less of a problem with, I, I love the genre, but not everyone who's writing in it understands what it's supposed to be about. And, mm -hmm. and, and especially with the popularity of like Akatar and Fourth Wing and books like that, mm -hmm. now everyone's diving into writing smut. And like, I have sex scenes in the Savior's Army. It's great. You know, that's, that's wonderful. But I've read so many romance books where it was just packed full of sex mm -hmm. and the characters never do anything romantic. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, you know, fucking is not inherently romantic, right? You can fuck someone you hate. You can fuck a stranger. It's not romantic. Mm -hmm. Like, where are the grand gestures and the, you know, sweet nothings? And, you know, like, where's that, you know? So, mm -hmm. so my problem is now that smut has become so popularized, I'm getting to a point where I'm starting, like, if I find out a book has smut, I'm a little bit apprehensive, not because I'm like prude, but because a lot of books I've read, they replace romance with smut. They just like, mm -hmm. the characters don't do anything romantic together. They just fuck a lot. And it's like, that's not what I'm here for. I, I mean, like, I'm great with smut, you know, good, well-written smut. <laughs> the video I'm releasing on Wednesday may disagree with that. But um, but that's not what I'm here for specifically. You know, mm -hmm. I am here for romance. If I wanted the erotic stuff exclusively, I'd read erotica. I hope that makes sense. What about, what say you? I, I also like what you said. You've said this before where you talk about intimacy as well. And you talk about like physical versus emotional intimacy. And when mm -hmm. you're like only having physical intimacy, it's just like not as fulfilling for if you're going into it thinking it's a romance and it's marketed as a romance, you know? Yeah. But yeah, but, for me, yeah, sorry. sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say, there's one book I read where it had like 23 chapters and at least 17 of them were sex. And I was just no, like, like, that's more erotica then. Yeah. You know? Just and, even percentages wise. And they didn't even like, they, they never did anything romantic for each other. They never went on dates or anything. And I was just hmm. like, oh, come on. It was, it was like, just tell me it's an erotica and be honest. Right. You know, and I've read erotica that I really enjoyed, but I went into it knowing that it's not going to be romantic and yeah. it wasn't romantic, but it was funny and like lighthearted and like you know, full of sex and stuff. It was about a, a succubus. Um, but anywho, it was, I enjoyed it, romantic. but I didn't go into it thinking it would be romantic because right. it's not a romance you know right. like it's like a bait and switch but anyway continue um so whenever it comes to trauma i talk about this a lot in my uh interview with jenna um about how to write trauma and ptsd and cptsd video that we have i say we it's on your channel but thank you for having me there <laughs> but of um, the the thing i talk about is one of the tropes that i hate is that like the the romance will fix like the trauma when like trauma gets like worse over the years without intervention or right. without like overcoming that trauma like if someone like is living with trauma and they like don't have some sort of something that is them actively working on it that is like it, it will get worse over time so like thinking about like an adult being in like who's potentially had this trauma for longer being in a relationship and then being like I don't have flashbacks anymore because I'm in love is just absurd <laughs> to me. I'm just like this is setting everyone up like to right. think that this is real because it's not real and that that's the thing is like it doesn't have to be real in the sense of like like there can be magic and there can be like um coincidences and there can be like sci-fi and like all the stuff in romance like that doesn't have to be real but the human to human or the creature to human connection needs to be like accurately depicting trauma for me personally or mm -hmm. I just like am not like I cannot suspend my disbelief at that point where I'm like wait a minute her like lunging and kissing him in the middle of him having a panic attack will make it way worse not better that's oh, not that, that, at like, all. that like made me panic I'm like <laughs> <laughs> if Cliff did that to me, like, I don't like to be touched during a panic attack, you know? If Cliff did that to me, I, I would Shug. not intentionally, yeah, but I would inadvertently, like, be like, ah! you know? Like, <laughs> well, yeah, karate chop, like, right. <laughs> karate chop the lips. Like, no uh, and this them. makes me happy, though, because I have plans for the Savior's War, and I'm like, oh, Iona's gonna like it. <laughs> <laughs> because I do think, I think romance can, like, it can be a comfort 
through trauma. Like obviously having Cliff by my side makes the PTSD better because I have someone I can talk to about it, but he's never, he's not going to fix it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's, yeah, yeah, that's the, thing. That's the like, job for my medication. Yeah. <laughs> therapy. <laughs> medication, therapy, um, any kind of spiritual practices that you may have that are like, like supportive of that. Um, but the, the, Romance, like having a person, and we talk about this in the interview, but having a person, having a support structure totally can like help someone ground and help right. someone believe that they can be loved and like all that stuff. But it's not going to cure like a trauma response. I you know? wish it would because then Cliff Me and too. I would be like, Cliff and I would be great, you know? Yeah. Like, I cure your trauma, you cure mine. It's all good. It's wonderful. If anyone could cure it, it's Butters. Butters, are you going to cure our trauma? I don't know. She's in the other room. But anywho, how long do you think it should take someone to outline a story? Um, no longer than a month. That's my opinion. That sounds right. For me, it takes about a couple weeks. Yeah. Actually, I outlined that new that project. I outlined that new project in two days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was a week. No, it wasn't. It was two, it was days. two days. But it was like an intense two days. Though. Yeah. So it felt like a week. For, but the thing, it was easier because it's something I know like really well. But anyhow, yes. let's see. Also, that one's going to be short. Potentially, yes. Like a shorter yeah. project. Right. So. Can you elaborate why series might not work out for a debut? Um, because when you're a debut, your audience is at its smallest and it's possible that you release your first book and it's crickets. No one reads it. Yeah. Um, and it's harder to get people to read the sequel versus the debut. Mm -hmm. For example, for the Savior series, the Savior's Champion is always going to be my best seller of mm -hmm. every book in the series. It's always going to have the most sales because that's the first book. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to die off after the first book. Some people are going to forget about the series. You know, mm -hmm. your first book is always going to be your top seller. So if you release the first book and no one reads it, and then you release a sequel, you are releasing it to an audience of zero. So mm -hmm. a lot of people who debut with a series never end up finishing the series because no one read the first book. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, and, and you may think, well, I'll release the sequel and that'll help drum up people to read the first book. But if no one read the first book and you've released a sequel and then people do go to check out the first book, they're going to see zero reviews on Amazon and mm -hmm. they're going to go, oh, I'm not going to read it. Because mm -hmm. having no reviews to them usually means the book is bad. No one was interested in it. This is a bad sign. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why a lot of series do not work out for a debut. Also, and this is something that happened to me, is the debut book can often be a learning experience of how you want to take your writing career. Yep. And a lot of people learn after their debut that this isn't fully how they want to take their career and they decide to go in a different trajectory. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do that when you're locked into a series. Yeah. So anything else to add? Um, I was gonna um, say that like it's I was leaning more toward like the human growth aspect of it like when you release your first book then it's like I, I don't like when you release your first book like you learn and grow so much that you need to keep the doors open in case you want to like you can keep the door open to creating a series but you can also keep the door open to not like giving yourself permission to have those choices right. instead of like locking in your future self with something that your present self wants to do right now it's better to have choices than to just be like suck agreed oh my goodness ferocious ferocious beast Oh, someone use, using Animorphs as an example of not gory, of gory middle grade. I read Animorphs and it, we, I think we have different definitions of gory. <laughs> I'll just say that. Yeah. Uh, also, um, I thought Animorphs was for young adults. Um, I honestly I can't not, remember, but comparing a series from the 90s to like standards today is always going to be like a, a bad Yeah, because the 90s, as weird as the sound, like was 30 years ago. Yeah, I know. 30 plus years ago. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the standards change. The industry changes. Um, it's because it's a YA. Okay. It's because well, it's a go. young adult or a youth adult book or something. Yeah, I thought they were teenagers in the book. So They were. But, but yeah. Um, and I like I said, to me, um, I didn't consider it gory. But everyone has different opinions, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, and also, yeah. It's, it's not saying you can't depict a gore. It's yeah. just like how you're describing it also right. needs to vary. I think people under people forget that violence and gore are not the same thing. 
Boss yeah. Lady is back in business. Thank you. Yay. Uh, the Wait, come on, come on, come on. Okay. <laughs> Personally, I'm a fan of the main couple breaking up due to tradition and lack of self-esteem. I'm a sucker for not quite forbidden love. Oh, um, like a second chance romance like that? Or... Yeah. I'm not a fan of breaking up because of self-esteem. For me, if that happens, I'm like, you can do better then. Go go find someone else, you know? Um, but, uh, but I do enjoy when they break up. Well, it depends. I uh, sometimes enjoy when they break up at the end of book one and get back together at, at book at, at, in book two. It, it depends on how it's done. Yeah. A lot of times it's done really, really badly. So yes, this isn't for me, but I'm glad it's for you. Um, yes, exactly. Confusing erotica with romance. My yes. ears are itchy. Ugh. Allergies, man. I agree, Chloe. I think you are absolutely right. Um, pe some people would rather say spicy romance rather than erotica because of a shame thing. Also because Agreed. spicy romance right now is selling. And so they're trying to like shoehorn themselves into it. Oh, uh, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. Okay. How do you write an asexual character who still feels romantic attraction? Um, so an asexual character who feels romantic attraction is still an asexual mm -hmm. um i think you were confusing asexual and aromantic um mm -hmm. aromantic means you don't feel romantic attraction um you would write an asex the i feel like this is a trick question <laughs> because like how do you write it you write an asexual person who still feels romantic attraction that's how yeah. you like you what you said i is think how you i think it. axel's accidentally confusing um arrow and ace and squishing yeah. them together yeah. and some people have both or both on both of those spectrums but a lot of people are not on both of those spectrums yeah i mean like i'm asexual and i'm you know married and <laughs> um you know like i have a husband who i love dearly you know same. like uh so yeah it's <laughs> not the same thing and all I, I think what you should do is definitely research asexuality and get a better understanding of it um and oh. also Research the. I'm getting the book wreck. Sorry. Okay. Keep going. Also, research the difference between um, romantic attraction and sexual attraction. I like to. It's honestly very, very clear to me. And I, but I, I think a lot of allosexuals like don't get it because they conflate them, and often because mm -hmm. they feel them at the same time. But basically. Mm -hmm. Sexual attraction is a tingling in your privates and a romantic attraction is a tingling in your heart. So you feel like, oh my gosh, I really like this person. I want to hold their hand. I want to hug them. I want to spend all this time with them. They're so cute and wonderful. And sexual attraction is like, damn boy, look at them abs. Look at that cake. You know, like it's different. And you could mm -hmm. feel both of those things for the same person but they are not the same thing. And sometimes you feel only one of those things for a person, mm -hmm. you know, or, yeah. and there's also aesthetic attraction, which people confuse with sexual attraction, which is where aesthetic attraction is where you just think someone they is look beautiful. Beautiful. They, yeah. They are so beautiful to behold. And a lot of which people I have a hard time with that one. <laughs> yeah. personally. I was like, I don't know. They seem kind, but I like right. could not, I don't understand the aesthetic. And that's a great example of how not everyone experiences that. Um, mm -hmm. I very you much can. Yeah, I very you much can. experienced aesthetic attraction. And mm -hmm. I thought for years that that was sexual attraction where I would look at someone and be like, wow, that is a beautiful, beautiful man. But it doesn't mean I want to mount him. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. like, wow, look. It's like, yeah. you know, look at that. Look at that creature. Like, behold <laughs> the beauty, you know? I'm oh, just there is also, sorry, Rowan, Row, Row, no. Is it Rowan? Oh, shoot. Sorry, keep going. I'm sorry. I did not mean to, like, blast in here. Oh, it's okay. Rowan Ellis? Yes. Rowan Ellis has an asexual uh, um, YouTube video um, the problem with asexual representation and the rise of asexual representation. So I'm going to include both of those. I've Man, yet to... I love doing Rex. Sorry, what were you saying? Yeah, I've yet to see asexual rep done in a way that I liked. It's all... and they are. It's always asexual and aro, which I think is great. You know, but because I... someone can be both, and, exactly. and I, I know both have people who are both, but mm -hmm. but I I think a lot of people put them together because they don't know that that they could be. Yeah. I think I it's think so too. the way it comes across is it's like um, it comes across as a lack of understanding. But the BoJack Horseman example is a good one because they started an app where, and this isn't too much of a spoiler, but they started an app where asexual people can date. Mm -hmm. So 
they want a relationship. And right. just because you're asexual doesn't mean you never, ever, ever, ever feel a sexual attraction. Right. Um, That's where gray sexuality whole... comes into play. Yay. Yeah. And then also, um, like, because I knew uh, an asexual person who was constantly having sex because they were deciding to have sex with people like it, right. like it wasn't and that's yeah. the thing is a lot of people don't understand asexual doesn't mean celibate i mean some asexual people are celibate that's some, fine too some uh, there's a difference between um uh biology and choice you know uh, and so plenty of asexual people don't feel sexual attraction but still have sex because they want to they, they enjoy pleasing their partner or because you have a fucking orgasm and orgasms feel good guys like you don't have to be sexually aroused to be like i know that if i have an orgasm it's going to feel really really good and i'm going to enjoy it so let's get to you it you had you know? a really good video on this on your channel you know who would have thought who would have thought you do i think you still do i don't think you like retired it and it was um how you were like let's say i'm not hungry but I want to eat a piece of pizza. Yeah. I still want to eat a piece of cake. Like I'm still going to because sometimes it tastes really good and it, right. and it feels good to be full, like that kind of thing. But it's not, that was one of, I can't right. Remember. Yes. It's like, it's not because I'm hungry. It's because it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Are there limits at which a character is irredeemable? It depends on what they're being redeemed for. If it's a romance and they cheat, irredeemable. I'm, I'm never marketing gonna wise. Yeah. They're never gonna, well, I mean, not never. Cause there's always going to be one person that likes something. Right. But, but this, like, you know, these are our opinions, you know? Yeah. And also people. I think like, well, some of it, it will be like based off of our opinions, like what we have preferences for, but like, no, no, like, like in the actual, like marketing scheme of things, if you're going with indie publishing, um, the readers don't typically like a cheating, person like character mm -hmm. as being redeemed yeah unless it's a miscommunication but even still that's like a rough that's a rough one yeah um so so if it's a romance cheating is usually not going to be redeemable um if it's a like hero villain thing genocide uh and also if it's a romance or hero villain thing any kind of sexual assault mm -hmm. uh not going to be redeemable yeah. unless you're creepy or you're a sarah j mass fan <laughs> you want to get in trouble today <laughs> <laughs> i just I, i've run out of fucks to give shallow smut is valid but i also want exactly that's the yeah thing. like because every once in a while i'll read erotica um but i'm reading it knowing that like i just want something light in like you know just chill and kind of entertaining you know um but but it's it's for you know if, if i'm reading a romance i want more than that you know anywho mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Some of these, <laughs> we've been doing questions for a long time. We should probably do a sprint, but sprint. And then uh, we can come back and do two truths and a lie. Cause I actually came prepared for once. Oh, um, did I just, I just released a video on this topic. Ooh, you did. Please watch that video. Yes. It's, it goes into way more depth than what we can do. Mm -hmm. Right. The second you'll like it. You'll like it. Yes. Um, wow. It's called, here, since I've got to, I, I like doing the, being in the know, be like, follow this link. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I made a video on this, so watch it. It's called, I'm going to link it. I'm going to look it. Link. 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 <laughs> okay. How to sell more groups. No, sorry. How to spell, how, no, what's happening? How to sell more books, group sales. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I can't believe I said 5 million words and yet didn't say anything at all. Good Lord. Okay. That one. Um, the novice, please watch that one. Yes. The conversation about asexuality in the chat is just so disappointing. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my gosh, people, people have a lot to learn. Um, That's okay. That's why we're here. But maybe you should read the book too of uh like the the how to write asexual character what it's called 
Writing Asexual Characters, colon, An Incomplete Guide by Salt and Sage Books. Very, very, very well done, in my opinion. Awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and do a sprint. Now is a good time when we come back, we'll play a game. What are we working on? I'll go first. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I have this week's video coming out, and I'm going to upload it and send it to Iona because I really, really love this video. This is, okay, guys, I need you to know, this is my favorite video that I have made in a really, really, really long time. So you guys have to watch it. It's going to piss a lot of people off. I don't care, obviously. Um, <laughs> this is part of your new, like, like you're like, I've returned. Yes, and there I've are returned. No fucks left. There are no fucks left to give. So I'm Only really, really happiness. excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send it to Iona. I'm really excited about this video. Um, so that's what, what I'm going to work on. What about you, Iona? I think I'm going to actually work on Birch today, but I don't know. I also had therapy today and she was like, you have had a lot of like good answers and like more information, but you're getting like into like kind of shutdown mode. Cause it's like a little bit overwhelming of yeah. like all the, well, just like, it's like good to know. Cause I'm solving some like right. being in this body mysteries, but she's just like, okay, you're getting like, a, or, or like teetering on the edge here. <laughs> so um, I'm like, okay, I don't want to get burnt out. So I'm going to try working on birch but i'm gonna listen to my brain and my body and if my brain and my body start being like no then i will stop <laughs> so that's what i'm gonna do and I, I might just like read a book or something okay also this is sorry i need your help what should i title this video oh i want something that's clickable i what i was gonna do is worst euphemisms and spicy writing but i don't know if that's if that's clickable like or like oh i feel like you should have a double entendre well, that well, I need. Oh, I want something that people can like look up. You know, it's it's something oh, that right. hmm. searchable is what I mean. Oh, I wish you could be like worse dick pics or something. Yeah, I'd get flagged. <laughs> <laughs> get flagged. You would worst, get flagged. Worst words used in spicy writing. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Also, I saw this YouTube video about YouTube videos. Ugh. I do not like looking out my window and seeing, and it's dark, and it's it's called country dark here because like there are no lights, uh -huh. and I am lit up in my office, and I just like look out, and there was just like a car there, like in the woods with its lights on, just sitting, and then I just like stared at it, and it just backed up, and it's gone. I don't know what just happened. That was horrifying. What the fuck? I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't like that, but. Yeah, I think it's I don't like, like that either. And it's I, 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 I'm upset. I, I don't know who that was. I don't know what's going on. I should have texted my husband and been like, who's sitting out there? Like, no one just sits in the woods like that. That's a weird thing to do. Right? But, oh, well. Jesus. If I get kidnapped. <laughs> well, you're on camera, so we'll see it. You're on camera, so you can watch me be whisked be away a, into the Bay with, land. Uh, um, witnesses. We'll be able yeah. to find you. It's like. Really easily. Iona before she was when she was before she was abducted said she saw headlights like that's gonna help <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay the comments are getting unhinged again okay guys okay. I'm going to set this we're gonna write now <laughs> per usual we will be muted and then when we come back you guys can share your productivity okay three two one go
All right, folks, how did everyone do? I, um, what did I do? I uploaded the video and I got it live on Patreon. So if you are one of my patrons and you're in the $5 tier, go watch it. It's really funny. Um, I hope you like it. Hello, look who's I here. saw it get uploaded and I was like, ooh, this is very exciting. <laughs> Hello, buddy. Um, mm -hmm. I realized I got an email that said that I need to do this particular report slash update thing for someone. And so I worked on that and I nice. might finish this one little section and save it so I don't lose what I've got. Awesome. <laughs> so if you hear me click clacking away. We love um, the click clack. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the um, ASMR. So Exactly. Exactly. Oh, hello, Butters. You got your ball and Butters is here. She's she's here. Oh my goodness, yes. You've been gracing everyone with your beautiful face. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Anywho, guys. Um, looks like a lot of people were very productive. Congratulations. Um okay. Uh sorry, I'm always distracted by comments. I need to chill out. Um, so let's play a game. Yay. Okay. I'm gonna... almost ready. I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll go first. How about that? Wait, don't tell. No, but no, you can't go yet because then I'm not paying attention. And I okay. want to look. Okay. So look we'll answer attention. some questions. I'll answer some questions while you stare into out. the silence while you're retyping. I swear right. it's just like two more sentences and then it'll be good. <laughs> can you hear butters? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> um. She's playful. <laughs> 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 Here you go. Go get your ball. Go get your ball. She's so happy. Okay. I know. Oh. I know. Okay. So I'm just gonna say this, and I oh. like. I okay. totally. I, I totally understand that people don't understand things, and it's fine. But first of all, keep in mind that it takes a lot of emotional um, labor to have to like explain your sexuality over and over again to people. So Google is there. It is very helpful. That's how I was able to learn my sexuality you know uh it was for the google okay so just know that it's there um but just you know there was some talk about like i don't get being asexual because i'm a very sexual person that to me is silly because okay so for the opposite just to be clarified the opposite of asexual is allosexual allosexual just means you experience sexual attraction at like a normal rate okay so if you're not asexual or gray sexual you're allosexual i'm going to be saying allo a lot so that's why i'm explaining it to you I don't know a single allosexual person who is sexually attracted to every single person they meet. I would wager that for an allosexual, most people you meet, you are not sexually attracted to. Um, if you were sexually attracted to everyone you met, I would think that you needed to go to a doctor. Like that's not normal. Um, so for you to not understand what it's like to not experience sexual attraction is strange to me because you don't experience sexual attraction all the time. You're probably not sexually attracted to your grandma. You're probably not sexually attracted to your teacher, you know, random strangers on the sidewalk. You know what I mean? That's what it feels like. It's the lack of sexual attraction. So it's like, it's very normal. It's something it's like that going to baseline. Yeah. It, it's very normal. And it's something that all people experience, whether they're ACE or ALO. Um, it is also worth keeping in mind there's a difference between romantic attraction, aesthetic attraction, and sexual attraction. Sexual, and quite often they come together, but they are not the same and they are not dependent on one another. Mm -hmm. I know plenty of people who were very sexually attracted to people, even though they thought they were ugly, you know? Like, they were like, I know this person's not hot, but their confidence is so sexy, and oh, I wanna fuck them. You know, mm -hmm. or I know this person's not hot, but the way they carry themselves, there's something about them, even though they are not aesthetically appealing, they still wanted to fuck them. Or there are people who are very aesthetically appealing, but they feel no sexual attraction. A great example of this is mm -hmm. Matt Reif. A lot of people find Matt Reif to be gorgeous Gorgeous, a very gorgeous man, but they find his personality absolutely appalling and thus there is no sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. So to be clear, sexual attraction is a uh, horniness, basically. Sexual attraction is horn dog feeling toward another person, a feeling of bumping uglies, okay? Aesthetic attraction is, wow, look at this beauty. Look at this beautiful face, this handsome face, sculpted abs, like perky tits, you know, like, look at this beautiful person. And yes, the beauty could potentially make you sexually attracted, or but the they are not. Too. Yeah. 
Like, what? like the outfits. Yeah. Too. The way they are dressed, you yes. know, the way they present themselves. Um, those things can lead to sexual attraction, but they are not the same thing. Uh, like I said, you could be, you could think someone is gorgeous, but not want to fuck them. Or you could want to fuck someone, even though they're not gorgeous. And romantic attraction is that feeling in your heart of like, oh my gosh, I just like them so much. And I want to talk to them and get to know them. And I want to hold their hand and give them kisses. And it's like, it's like friendship plus butterflies. You know, it's like that extra romantical feeling. You want to have a candlelit dinner. It's it's that feeling, okay? And you can feel that way about someone you're aesthetically attracted to. You can feel that way about someone you're sexually attracted to. You can feel that way about neither of those things. So they often go together, but they are not the same thing. Allosexual people often conflate them all because it's very common to see someone hot and want to get to know them because they're hot and want to fuck them because they're hot. So it's very common for those things to show up together, but they are not the same thing and they are not dependent on one another. I hope that makes sense. Like it's, mm -hmm. it, it gets does. so old. I also like, want to blame uh, media, society, stuff like that for yeah. like kind of telling people how to think because it's kind of like the lazy way to mm -hmm. show, uh, to move things along in like a TV show or a movie or something right. and just be like, oh, he fell, all of these things for him at, right. all at once, done. And, and you a it's lot like in romance it where it's like, wow, he's so yeah. hot and now I'm wet. And it's like, it's really, you know, I mean, like, I'm sure it can be that way for some people, but a lot of times they just use that formula over and over again and there's no nuance. Whereas, yeah. And I think most people don't actually, like, even if they're allosexual, I don't think that's a thing that just like happens. Like, right. I don't think that's, I yeah. think that's just, I more think it of, like, can, a, it can't, <laughs> you know, but. I do believe lust at first sight is possible. But I don't think it is the norm for, um, I don't think it's a baseline. And I don't think especially it's the norm for like all romantic relationships. A lot of romantic relationships can build off of friendship and things like that. Okay. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. After some serious cardiac care, a recurring family issue and paying off the house. It is damn, damn good to be back with you all. Just dumped another 674 words Holy on my shit. book. I really needed this. Butters has come to say thank you for the super chat. <laughs> wow. I These feel like kisses, that's like the... Right. The we need I would I would do it too, but I can't because she's getting on my arm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have like a tickle in my throat now, and I like don't know what's happening. It's just like nothing's bad. I just am gonna drink a lot of water while I'm. That's on okay. Here. She is sending you kisses. I swear, she does this. Someone will tell us about all the stuff they're going through, then she just jumps on me and gives kisses. She's like, "This is for them." Um, you did like a lot of good, chat. a lot of good like life, right? Like dreams coming true, shit, right, right. there. That takes a lot of work damn okay I'm you guys can mark <laughs> mark the kiss attack off on your bingo board she has licked off all my makeup it's worth it it's worth it thank you oh my boo moo oh my moo moo yes she's so sweet she's such a sweet girl anywho are we ready for the game yes i'm ready thank okay you for being patient oh how dare you no just kidding <laughs> okay so you guys we are playing two truths one lie Iona and I will each share two truths about ourselves and a lie, and you guys have to guess what the truth is and what the lie is, but the the caveat is we are going to allow each other to have a minute of grilling so they can ask questions about Any. anything, you know, to try and figure out what the truth, truth and the lie is, <clears throat> and you guys submit your questions. We will answer three of them, okay? So get those questions ready, okay? So do you want me to go first? Yes. Especially because I'm coughing. This uh, last time I volunteered you to go first, and so like I was like gonna take like do it this way, like flip it. But now I'm like randomly like gagging. So okay, <laughs> you go. So first. the theme for this one is Starbucks. Okay, I always do a theme because it makes oh, it easier yeah. to come up with a Starbucks. I okay. I copied you like copied your technique, and I did the same thing this time. Yeah, like not Starbucks related, just right. the, the the theme, the theme. Okay. Hi hi. Oh wait wait wait. wait. Oh, she's doing the thing. Everyone mark off that she's doing the thing. Right. <laughs> she's blessed us all. It's going to be okay. Oh, you ferocious beast. <laughs> <laughs> she's so funny. Okay. I'm playing a game, Butter. She's like, I want you to play with me. You have to bring me the ball. It's way over there. Okay. Anywho. All right. While working at thing number one, while working at Starbucks, I was involved in a love triangle and people were making wagers over who I would end up with. 
Wow. Okay. Number two, while working at Starbucks, I was badly injured because over 100 pounds of milk fell on my knee. I don't under, I mean, okay. I have questions about that one because it's a fluid, but that's fine. Keep going. (laughs) While working, it's, I I just translated it from gallons, but anyway. Oh, 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 okay. Sorry. Okay. That was dumb. I was being, I was like waterfall like I oh, I don't know. keep going <laughs> okay. while working at Starbucks we regularly sipped on venti cups filled with beer and told everyone it was hot apple cider wow do you want me to repeat them just in no case? I got I think I have it okay so love triangle uh milk cider okay oh yes. shit okay but it's I hear you okay three two one go how wh- who were you between um cliff and my coworker jeff oh what was the jeff like he was a drum person <laughs> He's, he was a drummer Imposter. And, <laughs> and um he, he he was a drummer and we had crushes on each other but then he started getting really like toxic mm. and I, I was i was like okay like he he everyone found out that he liked me and they were all making fun of him for it um so he like confronted me in front of all the coworkers at work one time. It was like, just so you know, I don't like you. And I was like, okay. And I, you know, he, he was just being like really immature and stupid. Mm-hmm. I mean, like we're in our twenties, you know? So he was I doing just, the thing where it's like, um, Oh, he likes you. That's why he's treating you like shit. That, yes. Yeah. And so I don't get I, one every time I wasn't, he embarrassed me. I was embarrassed and I was like, well, I don't like him anymore. And, mm-hmm. um, I started dating Cliff shortly afterward and he lost his shit. Okay. That sounds plausible. (laughs) Unfortunately. (laughs) Okay. um, This timer went off. Okay. (laughs) Just so you know, it really was like that. (laughs) And I was 20 and I think he was like 22. So he was technically older and should have known better. But anyway. Sorry. I don't like like you. Yeah. This isn't true. What they're saying next to the lockers isn't true. I don't like like you. Just like so, so the milk was in the gallon jugs and it was a shelf of milk oh, no. and my boss had unscrewed the shelf to clean it and then never screwed it back in. So it was just wobbling on the little things and the whole shelf stacked with 12 gallons of milk fell on my knee and it was extremely painful. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I have so many stories, but um, most women I know have way worse stories than me. They do. And also you met Cliff like really young. Like yeah, I met, you were young. So. I, I only dated from like ages 18 to 20. Yeah. Um, and also keep in mind, like I'm ace. So I didn't sleep with these guys. Yeah. Um, so it's just like, it's like, it, and even if, even if you had like no judgment, but like, most people like allosexual people like would or do yeah so like a lot of people have a lot of stories and so I like that yours is like the tip of the iceberg for what it's like to date (laughs) yeah as a woman as a woman and so I feel like a lot of people are like oh my gosh and it's like you really have no idea what it's like out there because I've been spared you know Mm -hmm. like I but but I'm very like I'm very comfortable talking about my stories because you know um uh What's mm-hmm. it called? Because, you know, they didn't lead to sexual assault or anything, except that guy yeah. slapping my ass. Uh, but uh, but a lot of people, a lot of women have had it. Apart. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of women have had it worse. So, yes. okay. Anywho. Did your boss know about the beer and the venti cups? My boss did it, but the shift manager did. It was mm. his idea. He bought it was the beer. his idea. What so the guy. shift, su- oh, not shift supervisors are like, there's the boss. And then there's the assistant manager, and then the shift supervisors are other people who who will just lead the shift of the oh, day. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking like um, not the boss, but the manager was what I was thinking yeah. when you said that. So I'm glad. Yeah. You so the boss explaining. is the manager. The boss is the manager, mm-hmm. and then there's an assistant manager, and then there are shift supervisors, which basically they 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 are like the mini boss of the day, but they report to the manager. The shift supervisor would buy us all beer and. Um, yeah, that's how we got away with it. He'd Hilarious. buy us beer and we'd just drink it in the venti cups. <laughs> uh, how did I? Okay. 
anywho, I don't know if that's, uh, anyone has any more questions or. I think those were three. So okay, so those were three. Okay, so is it my, can I get like guess? Sure. I'm gonna guess that the cider thing was true, but that you just didn't partake in it or like you heard about it happening. And so that's my guess is that that one is false. <laughs> we, did, we did sell we there is you can get hot apple cider at starbucks so if yeah. they asked for apple cider we'd give them apple cider you know <laughs> um, okay so that's your guess what is everyone else's guess yeah, the triangle guess. is a is a lie the beer is the lie triangle is the lie truth lie truth so that's the milk is the lie triangle is a lie okay i think the triangle is unfortunately true but i don't know okay the last one is the lie Milk yep. is too normal to be true. <laughs> the new thing is a lie. Okay, so it's a mixed bag. So this was another situation. This this is another situation where I the lie is only a lie by one detail. Uh -huh. So the love triangle was a lie. <gasps> I never suspected that at. Oh. But what I told you all was true about it. I'll get into it. But so, okay. so the milk, I it really did fall on my knee. And my manager was mad because he was like, no, we're going to get like a complaint from Jenna. And it's like, he did not give. My manager was an absolute piece of shit. And he Why ended up marrying. you were okay first? Your knee is there. Your knee I was like, hit. my knee is, per is still fucked up to this day. Like it really That's fucked crazy. up. That's crazy. Um, I mean, yeah. it, it was 12 gallons of milk, but um, I looked it up and that equates to a hundred pounds. Oh my so God. like, it was extremely painful. And yes, you my manager was a piece at of work. shit. <laughs> yeah. My manager was a piece of shit. And my shift manager, my shift supervisor, ironically, the same one who would buy us beer was like super nice about it. And was like, are you okay? Do you need to file an incident report and everything? Okay. And my manager was mad at him for like, oh, she should have filed an incident. I was like, fuck you. And he he ended up marrying one of my friends who was another star Ew, why would she really... okay it's fine i know it's her fault it's not her fault it's not her fault he's the it one. was a triangle situation that's not the lie ah! okay so um what was the lie part of the maybe, milk? No, the, maybe the milk the was jeff, true maybe um uh jeff didn't work at starbucks he was just no, like, he did so... i'll, I'll he get did? to it okay yeah yeah good, good. okay um the venti cups of beer was absolutely true. And I remember one time wow. I was in a fight with Cliff and I was drunk at work with my beer and I was just like venting to one of our regulars. I was like, he's so great, but like we're in a fight. <laughs> and looking back, it's so stupid. Like I was so obviously drunk. <laughs> but but um, also the fight was probably about something like dumb. Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> so stupid and everyone was else was drunk and they're like jenna he's a great guy you have to forgive him and i'm like i want to but it's like so hard i was 21 you know mm -hmm. anyhow so the the beer was absolutely true okay so the lie about starbucks i said while working at starbucks i was involved in a love triangle and people were making wagers over who i would end up with mm -hmm. i was involved in a love triangle jeff did we did like each other and then he humiliated me so i moved on and i started dating cliff and he, they were both in bands because Cliff was a drummer and Cliff, I mean, Cliff, Jeff is a drummer and Cliff's a singer. Mm -hmm. um, and guitarist. Yes. But he wasn't a guitarist for the band. Oh, um, oh, I see. I see. And he goes, he like, Jeff storms in when I'm working one day. He goes, are you dating the singer for four yesterday? Which was Cliff's band at the time. And I was like, what difference does it make to you? And he goes, if we didn't work together, I'd have you already. You'd be mine. Ew, like, this is some kind no of... autonomy? It's like, this felt like something from, like, a really gross, dark romance. Yeah, why you know? is he pointing at you? Stop. <laughs> and so... And so then he started, like, now that I was dating Cliff, he started trying really, really hard to, like, win me back. But in, like, the most toxic, gross way possible. So people were not making wagers over who I would end up with. Instead, what was really happening, and this is true, it's almost worse, um, my coworkers were offering to pay me to go on a date with Jeff just to shut him up because he was complaining so much. Um, I'm sorry, that's, like, not... Um, healthy to you like I'm glad you did not do that well obviously I was like, not going to do that but literally no there... no but I'm just like I'm glad you did it not because I thought you would but just because like <laughs> like sometimes people think like that like they think that'll calm someone down it does not like the placation and the enabling does not help the like... they were like they were like 
Jenna, he is insufferable. He complains about how he would have had you all the time. Can you please go That's on a date so with him? That's so embarrassing for him. I remember Billy, the shift manager, whose name I can't remember, but the one who bought us beer. Billy, mm -hmm. beer guy, and um, I think his name was Tom. I can't remember, but he was a very weird looking dude. They pooled money together and offered me $65 to go on a date with Jeff. That's not enough. <laughs> like, even, even if you, like, I know you're not even tempted to do this, but like, you're extra not going to be tempted. $65 to maybe have a stalker? Absolutely not. Right? Absolutely not. And then Cliff and I started dating. And it was so, it was like, so like, working at Starbucks was so much fun drama. Because there was literally like Team Cliff and Team Jeff. And, um. <laughs> Wait, who's on Team Jeff? The people pooling the money. <laughs> they were, they on were team... all on Team Jeff even after that? Just because they were friends with him, you know? So they were like. Why were they we... friends with him? Because <laughs> they're talking. <laughs> white men <laughs> you know? it's so easy to not be friends with someone like that like it's but, so easy to not oh trust also, me i know something that i'm working through in therapy this is related i swear something i'm working through in therapy is when i feel embarrassment for other people i have a really 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 hard time being around them i yeah. know you feel similarly mm -hmm. i don't know if it's an autism thing i don't know but it's I'm just like that embarrassment is too intense. It's so bad. It's so bad. And I'm not talking about cringe. I'm talking because like, cringe is like to each their own, whatever. Right. I'm talking about like someone being so toxic and they're like, I could have had her. I could have had her. As if I like, will never forget that. I could have had if we didn't work together, I could have had you. You'd be mine. <laughs> it's like, Jeff, I'll never forget I it. have a say. Like, like. I'm not up for auction. Like, I don't understand what's going on, but that's really embarrassing for him. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the team Cliff, I was set up with Cliff from coworkers at Starbucks. Um, so they were team Cliff oh, because they knew him. Okay, and okay. He, he would come in to visit. And if he came in to visit while team Jeff was there, like you come in to visit me at work. When he yes. came in to visit while team Jeff was there, that's they nice. would try and kick him out. And if he came in to visit while team Cliff was there, he would get all this free food. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I would just visit it was you like, and like while well, Team Cliff was there, like I'd be like, well, might as well visit my girlfriend, and then also get a whole bunch of free stuff. Like, yeah, that's it was crazy. But he would just come in to see me to see me, and he would bring me flowers. And I remember one time he brought me flowers while Jeff was working, <gasps> and his face just turned completely see, red. I and he was can't. Like, this is too embarrassing, right? Like I can't. Like he he's like having a physical disruption at work that is like visible to the but naked eye like this is upsetting him, like he did I, it to I, himself because we liked each other and I made it clear that I liked he liked me I made it clear I liked him back mm -hmm. and then he was embarrassed because people acknowledged it and it's like well we are adults so it's not like this is cootie town you know what I mean I know and he got embarrassed so he humiliated me and I'm glad he did because that was a great red flag to see yeah. right away to make me know okay yeah and I he moved on himself he, out yeah, yeah that was good. good now I know that he is and it was all it also made total sense because he was a Taurus and I'm an Aquarius and it's like the most toxic match um in the zone yeah because um Aquarians need a lot of freedom and Taurians need um they're they're very clingy and they need a lot of commitment right away which goes down to that I would have had you like they're they in their most toxic form they can be very ownershipy um not saying all Tauruses are toxic just saying when they are toxic they're very um ownershipy and controlly so anywho yeah. uh thank you and then literally like a few days literally a few days after maybe maybe even a, just a day after the whole you be my thing Sabrina was like, you should talk to Cliff. You should talk to Cliff. He's Jason's friend. And Jason was her boyfriend who worked oh, at Starbucks with us. And um, I started talking to him. And then drummer Jeff shows up. He's like, are you dating the singer from For Yesterday? Oh, my God. This is ridiculous. This is this is like, I, I like, I would, okay. I would be embarrassed to be an actor for a show that had that line. <laughs> and this is real life. So, like, this is him, like, 
existing as his natural he, self. like stormed in like a bull very towards like are you dating the singer and then he goes you don't even like that kind of music and i was like i'm not dating him for the music i'm dating him because he's a nice guy because drummer jeff was in a metal band and i like metal oh, and or yesterday oh was i see i was like band. why is he bringing that up but now that that yeah. does actually make sense. that was one of the reasons we liked each other because we liked a lot of the same bands sure 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 um but i'm not dating you to listen to your fucking ipod i'm not okay? a groupie yeah like, also I, I don't can hear your music whenever i want so can everyone else like, right and that's the thing is it's like i wasn't dating cliff because he was in a band i was dating him because we were set up and then we ended up vibing really well together yeah. and so um <laughs> so anywho that was the story so they weren't wagering who i would pick it, i because i already picked you know mm -hmm. i picked cliff and that was very clear mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but um they were they were trying to pay me to date just to go on a date with jeff to uh, just you know yeah, publish the memoir one day. <laughs> yeah, we call ourselves Team Jiffy Butter. Get it? Because oh, that's cute. But yeah, we met when I was all when a month before I turned um twenty one. So almost twenty one. We met when we were twenty one, and we have been together ever since. And that's he's so wonderful sweet. and amazing and perfect and lovely. And he would visit me at work, and he'd bring me flowers, and he was like night and day to Jeff because he was such a gentleman and so respectful, and he was so nice to everyone. Like he would come in and talk to everyone and, and all that. And he's so great. And now he's your daddy. He's your daddy, boy. So cute. That's how she met your dad. Yes. Yeah. Pick that Gemini over Taurus. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah, like, I'm sorry, but like, and, and that's the thing is like, you know, I I can't be with someone who's putting me on a short leash. The Taurus is very famous for like, um, there, there's a stereotype for Taurus is that by the third date, they're going to ask you to be your, your girlfriend. And it's oh, so that's kind of like the opposite of what he did. I feel like, because he's <laughs> he like, you're my property. Yeah, he was just like, he was like, I don't like you, actually. Yeah, but it's like but, don't be so don't be so cocky. And it's like, okay, well now I don't like you either. And he's like, how dare you? And it's so, like, what? Like, what just yeah. happened? Right. But the thing is, is that the, the whole ownership thing. They're very known for oh, like oh, I see, I, like the bad ones, like the well, bad. Well, no, 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 no. Like, uh, sorry, I'm not explaining well. Tauruses are like the most, um, like they want to put down roots really fast. Oh. Um, so even good Tauruses, the, the stereotype of the Taurus is by the third date, they're going to ask you to be the, your girlfriend, they're you like know? They're yeah, 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 there you go. Okay, okay, and okay. it's funny because my sister's married to a Taurus and on their third date, he asked her to be his girlfriend. Hilarious. And she said, and she said, give it a month please that's, I, need time. I think that's more yeah, yeah i think that's an appropriate and so he response. did and once the month hit he asked her again and she said yeah. like so funny down the because that's if that if that happened to me immediately run and like i'm not gonna say give it a month i'm just gonna leave like it's a huge red flag for me mm -hmm. um <laughs> i don't want you but you not wanting me is offensive yes and it's like it's like um i don't like you back so you should move on and then you did and he's like well not like that and right it's like what, what do you want? What do you want, Jeff? <laughs> like, what do you want? Yeah. Uh, and But the thing is, is I think he was just trying to save face around everyone else, but he mm. didn't expect me to actually, like, do what he said. But oh, yeah, then God. the ownership shit happened. Someone said you weren't a typical groupie. I wasn't a groupie, period. No, no, you're not a groupie. I wasn't dating for the music. I, I didn't even know until, you know, I was dating. I was dating Sabrina. I was friends with Sabrina, and she was like, you should meet Cliff. I didn't know he was a fucking singer. Um, but anywho. Right. Right. Okay. Oh, I know. Anywho. Very sweet. Okay. I'm ready with mine. Okay. Unless we want to do another writing sprint. We can do whatever. No, no, no. Do, do yours. Okay. Denise, Denise is digging her heels in. I'm not like that at all. Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> no, but well, also. The thing is, like, there's always the, the moon there's sign, always the, the stereotypes rising. of each sign. There's always the good traits of each sign and the toxic traits of each sign. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about this because Jenna's, like, the whiz at this. But I know that, like, um, Capricorns, because that's what I am, um, they're, like, known for being, like, ruthless and thinking about money above all else mm -hmm. and like i am not like that i'm right. very intentional with my money and i'm good like at saving money but i'm not like that but jeff bezos is and he's right. a capricorn so mm -hmm. it's like it's like kind of like when someone talks about like oh capricorns can be toxic blah blah, blah. i'm like yeah all signs have the ch the 
possibility of being toxic. Yeah, I don't remember what the Aquarius toxic things are. We God complex, God oh. complex, and um, um, very emotionally detached. I can't. I don't see you as that but i'm trying to think of any other aquarius i know other than my daughter who is not like quite yet developed enough to right? yeah <laughs> she's there like i'm good hello <laughs> <laughs> and i i would let's see i've definitely met um met aquarians who i'm trying to think of famous aquarians that are like that had the gone oprah and aquarius yeah she has the same birthday as me oh we're um, also humanitarians we like to do stuff oh, that yeah, helps yeah. people and stuff ellen degeneres very like very very good example of a that's a good Aquarius. example yeah justin timberlake oh that's a really good example yeah yeah, yeah. god complex god yes complex. for yeah. sure uh so yeah. uh, every sign has um every sign has their, their bad apples to yeah they're spoiled eggs to i'm trying <laughs> to think of any other thing and yeah. also keep in mind that the moon sign is the one that is most um that you are usually going to wear like around people that you don't know as well and stuff. So a lot of people, their moon sign seems a little bit more authentic in a lot of situations. Like they seem a little bit more like their moon sign. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and um, my moon sign is also Aquarius. I'm a triple Aquarius. So I'm you just, are. there's no way for me. Mine's Capricorn, Virgo, Aries. <laughs> the guy who wrote, I'm bringing sexy back has a God complex. Who would have thought <laughs> I didn't know um, Justin Timberlake saying that, but really? now I can now I can hear it. I'm yeah. being in sexy back. Yeah, that's yeah. him. <laughs> I was like, I was like doing the yeah, and then I was like, yeah. I was like, I would be a great backup singer. <laughs> yeah, and that's all you have to do. No, I'm just kidding. That's not what backup singing is. But okay, so here are my things. Okay, okay. One is one time I said I was glad a woman's husband died at her family celebration. <laughs> Another one. Is one time I told my host family in Colombia that I was pregnant when I wasn't. And then the last one is one time I sat in ketchup and everyone made fun of me because they thought I was on my period. Okay, so first of all, I think I know which one's the lie. Oh, unless no. there's a tiny fact change. Just uh, because just I think... Okay, that's okay. Just pretend you don't know. Okay. <laughs> and then why we can we let the let chat the... guess. I'm why sorry. don't we let the chat guess? Um, I'll, I'll ask some questions, okay? Okay, yeah. Ask some questions. Ca questions. <laughs> yeah, Krim's like, I know one of these stories. Okay. But um, it's two truths and a lie, not two lies and a truth. Okay? Okay. Yeah, two truths and a lie. Okay. Um, how old were you with the ketchup? Um, I was in middle school and it was oh. in seventh grade Okay, and it, it was, was at lunch. And so like I sat, like it was leftover ketchup and I was wearing light pants. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why did you tell this woman that you were glad her husband was dead? Um, I didn't mean to. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that a certain phrase meant something else. And so I said, that I was glad her husband died when I meant to say that I was glad that she got a divorce, but <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, but she had married one person. Like she had married one person who was really abusive and she got a divorce from him. And then she married another guy um, after that divorce and he was a lovely, but he died. Mm -hmm. And then I got like certain terminology confused. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, people are, are theorizing in the comments. Uh, someone says, why did you express gladness over such a sorry situation? Um, but I think we answered that. Where... Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a funeral. It was a celebration. Like it wasn't at a funeral. It was like at her celebration, like party. Uh -huh. And then I accidentally said like, cause she got engaged again. Um, and like to her third husband and I was like, I'm glad he's dead but i didn't say it like that because i used a certain phrase that i didn't understand <laughs> okay what's the middle one again um no, that no. she accidentally said she was pregnant and and whenever i was living in uh, or like not living but like was visiting colombia south america okay. so a bunch of people are saying that one's the lie okay um someone said the first one's the lie um sean says that he thinks the ketchup is false <laughs> because it's too normal because <laughs> it's too normal i mean that's happened one time i stepped on ketchup and it shot across the room so oh. 
Um, so most people are saying the pregnant one is the lie. Okay. Okay. Can I say what I think is yes. the lie? Yes, you can say. I think the ketchup is the lie. You are correct. So the yes, ketchup form I remember, is the lie. <laughs> I remember you talking about the late husband. Yes. Okay. So I'll go through each one. So mm -hmm. starting with the lie, um, that happened to a friend of mine where a bunch of people were making fun of the, well, she wasn't a friend, but she was like a friendly acquaintance. Like she was in like, like I was used to seeing her in our lunch period. And I would kind of like walked up to her and I was like, Hey, how are you doing? Cause she was like getting made fun of. And I kind of like put my like sweatshirt like over her shoulder. She's like, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, can you just like tie this around your waist? Cause I think you're having your period and like some folks are pointing at it. And she was like, I'm not though. And I was like, well, something's going on. And she was like, oh, shit. I sat in ketchup. And then she was like, thanks. And I never got my hoodie back. What? <laughs> but, wow. Middle school is a wild time. So that's what actually happened. Okay. So, <laughs> excuse me. I'm so sorry. Don't die. So the first Don't die. One, <laughs> no promises. No. Okay. So the first one was, so like I said, this woman was married to this awful person, got a divorce. Uh -huh. married this lovely lovely man love him he passed away um and then like decades went by and she was single for a long ass time and then she finally found love again she wasn't looking for it but she like was like nope that that chapter is closed for me and then like in her senior years found this lovely other senior guy and they like got engaged so at her engagement party there were all of these like um older ladies there obviously because that's like her age group and she was like another like mom to me. And so I really, really loved her and she lived like really close by. So I was invited and I felt like all fancy. And it was a bunch of these like rich old white ladies all together. And there was a group, like a gaggle of old women that were just like, a gaggle. can you, <laughs> she's there like, can you believe that like she's going through this after her late husband? And I thought late husband was like a rich person way to say divorce. Because a lot of like wealthy people will not say I got a divorce. They'll say like we grew apart or like th they'll say like euphemisms right, for divorce. Right. They won't be like I divorced that dick. Like they'll be. They'll <laughs> say, so I thought, that, I thought late husband meant and I was like no. So I like waltzed up to them thinking I was like defending her honor. And I was like no I'm glad he's gone. And they were like oh. And they were like clutching their pearls. I'm like I hope you clutch your I hope you remember this. So I was just like I'm glad he's gone. Because if he hadn't been gone, she never, never would have met Harry. Because Harry is the new guy. And, and I, I'm glad. And they were like, oh, my. And they, like, walt waltzed away and all this stuff. And I was like, that was, like, such a severe reaction. Like, I thought they would be, like, embarrassed about what they were saying. But they weren't. So I was like, what the hell? So I went home. And I was like, mom, what... By any chance, do you know what like late husband means? And she's like, Yeah, it means that their husband passed away. And I was like, No! <laughs> uh, <laughs> scandalous. Yeah, so I like ran back over to her house like the next day, like tears, like just straight. I barely slept that night. And I was like, Judy, I got confused. And I said, I was glad that someone died, but I didn't mean it. And I'm so sorry. And she started laughing so hard that she started crying and she was like it's fine <laughs> she was like that's Good. hilarious and she's like also they shouldn't be talking about that anyway at my engagement party like they should just be happy for me so it's fine I appreciate the effort <laughs> so I thought that was really sweet okay so that was the first one the second one happened when I was visiting Colombia and I was living with this host family and someone was giving me a present for being like there like welcome to Colombia and so my family's Panamanian and I'm first generation so if you say like oh thank you like vieja it's like thank you like you wise elder and so she was like she was like oh but whenever I said oh thank you wise elder she was like oh, oh and then my host mother was like giggling and she was like no 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 she's like she's like just she's just saying thank you she doesn't she doesn't understand and I was like I'm so embarrassed so I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. And she went, <gasps> and then she just like left. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, she can't even like accept an apology. I'm trying my best here. Like, like trying to speak Spanish and being fluent and shit. Like I know Spanish, but like sometimes things like go wrong and it's okay. Like dialects change. And my host mother kept laughing so much. And then she kept egging me on. So like, we'd be going somewhere and she'd like correct my grammar. And she's like, tell them like tell them you're sorry like like tell them you're sorry and I was like 
I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. And they were like, oh. And so then they kept giving me like free food and shit. And I was like, what the <laughs> hell? Like what? I was kept getting like so many gifts and like so much food. And I'm like, man, people treat me well. And then they kept asking if I was married. And I was like, what? No. Because at the time I was 18, I was like, no, I don't plan on getting married as a teenager. Like what's happening? And they were like, oh my. And then they would give me more shit. So it turns out that I got confused. I was trying to say, so instead of saying I'm embarrassed, I, I was saying, estoy, uh, oh my gosh, estoy embarazada, which means I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, and I'm embarrassed is estoy avergonzada. And that is very close. And I am upset. And it didn't make sense. <laughs> Until I came home and like a bunch of people were like, oh, wow, you got so much stuff. And like, yeah, people kept like giving it to me every time I said I was sorry and I was so embarrassed. They would just like give me stuff. They're so like lenient and whatever. But they were really interested in my love life. And I think it was like not until like a year later when someone was like, oh, yeah, this like means you're pregnant. I was like, wait, no. <gasps> and then it like back like backwards like made a whole bunch of sense. I was like, oh. If it makes you feel better, one time in Spanish class, we were learning body, body parts, and one of them was cuello, and um, this one girl in our class who, like, habitually couldn't pronounce anything right was going through the list and said culo, and my teacher freaked out and was like, is that on the list? Because it's technically a body part, you know? She's like, is that on the list? body part. Yeah. That's so funny, because <laughs> another thing that, I, that does make me feel better, except for, I should know Spanish, but I was um, really tired, and I was jet lagged. And I, the things that I get when I travel are like, I like to take a lot of pictures. I would rather like have pictures if nothing else, but I always get a like handmade blanket from the area. And mm -hmm. I always like getting like a glass Coca-Cola bottle to take with me um, because cool. like the Coca-Cola is like in a different language and like all that stuff. Right. So I was like really exhausted and I called it Coca-Cola, which means, <laughs> <laughs> which means Coke ass, like cocaine ass. Like, and I was like, what is going on? I can't, I can't. But I love how your teacher was like, what? She's like, is it on the list? Like, <laughs> Did I put that on the list? Like, oh, amazing. Oh, amazing. my God. So, oh, right. well, that was yeah. very fun. I oh, enjoyed and it. Also, okay, that was my last. Oh, sorry. I'm scratching my thing. Also, okay, history nerd said the last. That's my. I had three big oopsies. One was mm -hmm. Coca Cola, one was Estoy Embarazada, and the last one is. I typed out like to all my Colombiano friends, like happy new year, but um, you didn't have the Enya. I didn't have the Enya on the, like this was before you could like flip your things around. So uh -huh. I said, happy new anus. I hope <laughs> it's the best anus that you ever have. <laughs> anus for everybody. Like, I just, like <laughs> They just got a bleach job. Listen, that's fine. They're just it's... showing it off. Right. Oh my gosh. Butters is just loving this right now. She's like, oh, yeah. Butters, I love that you're doing the thing. It makes me feel like seen. Her little paws. And safe. <laughs> Her little paws. Yes, hello. She's so sweet. Yes, she's my little sweet girl. Okie dokie. <laughs> Butts all around. Butts all around. Butts all around. Oh, oh hey, you know what? We all need one. It's we fun. all need a butt. Everybody uh, needs a butt. I think I got that book for my babo recently. Everyone has a butt. Everybody has a butt. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, uh, okay, sorry. Distracted by comments. We are going to do another sprint. Um, you have to watch the video. <laughs> That's what I'm making you do during the sprint. Okay. I only okay. have two more sections of my, that's going to be my reward for doing two more sections of this report. Okay. And then I will do that. I suppose sure. I'll allow it. All right. <laughs> hey, I love hey, it. Say, say hello. Oh, my, oh, my Momo. Uh, oh, my Momo. Uh, <laughs> no. oh, I got shunned. I got shunned. Okay. She wants to kiss on the cheek. <laughs> I don't know, Emily, another thing that can happen when you take ASL is like one time I asked someone about work. I don't, maybe this is like a thing that I do now. I'm starting to sense a pattern, but like ask someone about work and I asked them how was making out because like this is work, but I did this and it's like, no, they're like, how was what? And I was like, making out. And they're like, 
what's happening? Oh, I'm going to have to pee. So I like break. wrote it down and they're like, oh my God, you're bad at this. <laughs> you're like, well, I'm doing like, my I'm best. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so stuck. sorry. We hear you, Butters. Do you hear her? She's so feisty. She's like, she is. On. She's like so talkative. I love it. Very demanding. Yeah. Very good at, um, um, oh my gosh, um, self-advocating. That's the word yes. I'm for. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Setting the timer for 20 minutes, guys. We will be muted. I will have to pee from all the laughing. Three, two, one, go.
All right, folks, we're back. How did you do? I reviewed my video and I did more YouTube stuff that I had to get done, um, like thumbnails and things like that. And I, the funniest thing happened. I uploaded this week's video, which is super vulgar. Like I say, pussy. I say, cunt. I say, jism. I say, labia, mons pubis. And I got approved for full monetization, which might change over time. But for now, it's full monetization. And then I uploaded a YouTube short that is all about what is a storytelling structure, you know, a inciting incident, rising action. And that one got approved for limited monetization because there is some content identify as not suitable for most advertisers. So they're not no. okay. They're not okay. They're totally fine with me saying cunt and pussy, but they're not okay with me saying storytelling structure. I don't even know like what part of the storytelling structure you could be describing that would make it like all I could think is climax but climax is nowhere worse than pussy no also that's like used for so many different things like right. of the story of of a song mm -hmm. like I don't know Anywho, uh, how'd you do um it was good I finished the report I just had two more sections to submit and then I watched your video <laughs> so it was amazing Thank you. It is my favorite video in a long time. So I need you guys all to watch it and um, just deal with it. <laughs> watch it all the way to the end and like it and comment ridiculous things. There are so many like quotable things from it. And also the <laughs> editing just like elevates it even more. Because I know yeah. it's like, but you're really funny, but the editing is like gold. I really like your editors. Oh, I love my editors. I love them so much. And they, they, it was so funny because I sent this video and I was like, sorry for all the penis. And then they wrote me back saying, just so you know, we don't mind. We think it's really funny. And I'm like, oh, good. You know, so it's nice that they're enjoying it. They're like, you know, she's laughing while she's editing. Right, butters. You look at your little tummy. Look at that little tummy, tummy, tummy. Oh, she's so okay. cute. But anywho, YouTube's <laughs> moderation is actually useless. Yeah, it's all a fucking mess. I think it's because it's like not human based or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they get a lot of stuff wrong. Sorry, I have that tickle again. Do you have an inhaler? No, because I don't have asthma. Apparently. Well, sometimes you can get an inhaler even if you don't have asthma. So. <laughs> interesting. That's so interesting. Or maybe that my family's just like sneaky because my dad has an inhaler and he doesn't have asthma but maybe he just like uses my mom's or something that's so um, funny it like it has steroids in it so they like suggest right. you like do if you need it but don't oh my god could you please well there are some that you can take like every morning and every night and then there are some that it's like you take it once and if you take it more than that there's a problem you know uh, uh-huh yeah, it's and the, the, they changed the formula for that one, though, because I remember when I was a kid, it would make me, like, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I really hated mm -hmm. taking that one. But now it's not like that anymore. Um, but anywho, let's get to questions. We only have 20 minutes left on the stream, so I figure we could... Questions you know, abound. I think that's a good yes. idea. I've been told that I, as a young writer your work will always be seen as good for a teenager rather than good. Do you guys have a take on this? I don't think it'll always be seen as good for a teenager, but nine times out of 10, that's going to be the case. And um, that's because teenagers, their brains are not fully developed. Um, so, you know, they're, you know, they're still not learning. Going, yeah. You're still learning about shit. You're not mm -hmm. going to have as much life experience, you know, um, you're probably not going to feel or understand the depth of being like fully in love and you know the complications of politics and things like that obviously you're going to ex like you, you you fall you can fall in love as a teenager you experience politics as a teenager these are things you're experiencing but it's like a newer thing you're you're just getting into it um so you're not going to have the level of understanding as some adults i say some adults because we all know adults who are fucking stupid and they just There's stay stupid <laughs> they're like that it's just like their brain has their two brain cells rubbing together and that's it you know so i'm not saying that all teens are like dumber than adults that's not what i'm saying yeah what i am saying is that usually teenagers when they write stories you can tell a teenager wrote it because there is a lack of experience um and a lack of the full analytical capabilities of you know certain things that yeah. doesn't mean it's bad 
it could still be very good. But that's why I would personally recommend while you're a teenager, write for fun, write to grow your craft, write to explore and to find yourself and to see what you're interested in and save the publishing for adulthood. Because if you do that and you keep writing and writing, you're going to give yourself that experience and your writing is going to be kick ass as an adult. It's going to be really, really good as an adult. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's going to really do well in publishing. So mm-hmm. I personally think, you know, that, that's what um, I would recommend. That's not to say all, I mean, I'm, I'm sure every once in a while there's a teenager who writes, you know, beyond their years and that's great. I just wouldn't assume I'm the exception to the rule. Um, mm-hmm. And that's not to say that all adults are great writers because we mm-hmm. all know that's not the case. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's my opinion. What about you, Iona? I think that anytime someone has like asked this question or like, has has wondered like oh should I wait to publish should I wait now and it's like um like should I write it now should I publish now and I think that like as a kid it's the kids that ask this question and have the drive to do this that end up developing their craft and do become great writers later because they've been working on their craft for so long Mm -hmm. like if you've read Jenna's um, shut up and write the book she talks about how long she's been writing and it's been like a long ass time (laughs) because it's been since you were a kid you know and um same with me I've been writing since I was really really little and I think just like by the time I was like a new adult I was able to write like at a certain level and why I was able to publish and stuff so don't like yeah like so don't take it as like oh you have just a small brain and you can't yeah it's not like that no 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 because that's not what we think and that's not true but it's just like it's like wait wait just wait and work on it and then by the time you're an adult, oh my God, look at him. <laughs> He's jump up there, knock everything down. Okay. He's like, I'll spare you. He was flicking his tail. He knows. But um, I think that it's it's good to to build up your skill first. Um, what is your opinion of Colleen Hoover? It's Me- not a positive yeah. one. Yeah, it's just bad. Why isn't it doing it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't feel like we need to elaborate. You know? Nope. Given the opportunity, would a BFA in creative writing actually be helpful or is it a crock? Can I get the same info on YouTube at this point? The degree would be free for me. Um, I mean, for me, it's like, well, it's free, so might as well. But I don't personally recommend um, going to university for the sake of creative writing. Most people I know who went to college for creative writing said that they had to unlearn everything they learned um, Mm -hmm. because, unfortunately... Um, academic emphasis of creative writing. Um, it's they're more like literary. Yeah, they, they do put an emphasis on literary fiction, which is the worst selling genre of writing, but it's the most pretentious. <laughs> and so they put an emphasis on there. They really discourage things like fantasy, sci fi, romance, the stuff that sells, you know. And um, their teachings regarding the publishing industry are very outdated. Um, so most people I know who do go to school for creative writing, they get taught a lot of stuff that they're not able to use in the real world. Um, it's the difference between theory and application. It's not applicable to the real world, what they were taught. Um, so if they want to be successful as a writer, they have to completely unlearn everything that they went to school for. So personally, I wouldn't do it, but that's not to say say you can't get something out of it like maybe you know like you know maybe you're may i know some people who are glad they did it because it thickened their skin because they Mm, they got so used to have that environment where they're like sharing their work because i remember in um university where like undergrad Mm -hmm. uh there was this professor who's awesome i really like him and he actually is like a hugo award winner which is Mm -hmm. cool so it's like you know sci-fi but like i really liked his his class of like um like his creative writing class so I took a class with him and it was really great but um and it does thicken your skin and you do share um your work with people and it's kind of like a vulnerable experience and a really good learning experience but also side note if um a degree would be free for you it might be good to focus on like whatever you know I know I was talking before about like making giving yourself as many options as possible Mm -hmm. um uh fortunately slash unfortunately um you need a degree for certain like i don't know like jobs or career choices so like 
I would rather you have more choices than less choices. So mm -hmm. it might be worth like getting a degree in something that will is like not as niche, but you can also dual major or get a minor. Well, yeah, for me, it's depends. like if I was offered a free degree, I'd get something in like business or something that I could use that would help me get a job. A language day job. is so another like one they need to yeah. language. Um, but yeah, there's like depending, yeah, business or or whatever it is that something you, that could help me get the day job while I write the book. Yeah, unless yeah. you already have a day job that you're happy with, and that's fine too. But like, like just like Jenna was saying, like not getting the degree specific, like not keeping yourself from writing or publishing, just because you 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 don't need the BFA mm -hmm. for that at all. Okay. Yeah. I haven't directly experienced romance or intimacy with a partner. What advice would you have to make the romance and relationships realistic in my books? Um, lots of beta readers critique partners mm -hmm. lots of eyes on it um and pay attention to the romances you read and mm -hmm. what you gravitate toward and what you like about it mm -hmm. um that's not to say that everything you enjoy is realistic but it at least gives you an idea of how you want your story to go mm -hmm. um remember there are lots of things in this like I'm never going to experience healing magic, but I still wrote a character with healing magic. It does help to have experience in the areas that are real life, like romance, friendship, betrayal. These are things that are just a part of life and it makes it easier to write that, yeah. um, having that experience, but it's not impossible. Um, so that's what getting lots of opinions, um, and doing lots of research is going to help with. Oh God, I was about to spoil something. There might be a resource that will help you with this coming soon. Was that too much? <laughs> no, possibly, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about you? What do you say? So I also think it's good to, I was, you're gonna suggest reading more. I always suggest reading more. It's getting. I'm sorry if I'm being annoying today. I'm like, read this book, read that book. Oh, I, I love it. Good, good. I always suggest reading more. Um, and you know, like what you're you like and don't like. Um, it's helpful to kind of have like an inner critical eye when looking at um romance and intimacy and things like that. Um, but also like there are lots of things you can write about that you don't experience. Like I know folks who have written about like um, pregnancy really well when they haven't experienced that in real life because uh -huh. they did like enough research and they had enough eyes on it, like what Jenna was saying. So I think it's totally doable. Like you don't right. have to like keep yourself from doing that. I also know a lot of people who write romance who like have a limited experience or no experience and they're very good at it. So it's mm -hmm. not like a, Think about Jane Austen. I mean, that's a right. really long time ago thing to compare to. I'm not saying be like Jane Austen, but like Jane Austen was never married and she like lived her best life. And then she like pumped out these amazing um, romance novels that still hold up today, in my opinion. So right. I think it's like, yeah, I think it would be good. So yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, can you have a story in third person, but have letters in first person? Yes, this is done all the time. You and text are, too, yeah. like if it's more modern day. Well, it yeah. doesn't sound like it's modern day, but still. Yeah, letters, a text, messages, um, mm -hmm. diaries. This is very, very common. Oh, diaries. I didn't even think about that. I think, oh, okay. A long ass time ago, I said what those things are called and I couldn't think of it. I think of the name of what those like text messages or the newspaper headline or whatever are called. Like those little breaks that are like almost like a picture in a book. Uh, and I couldn't remember the name. And they're called periodicals. Periodicals. Wee. Now we know. Actually, now I'm doubting myself. I said it way too confidently. Periodicals. <laughs> She's like, I don't want the book. ball to touch me. So cute. I feel like they're called periodicals. Now I'm doubting myself. It's fine. I said it too confidently. And every time, every time I've been like, I know the answer. It's been like wrong. <laughs> I think the key to writing good romance is to remember the point of res romance is respect and good treatment and not, you know, well, I wouldn't say that's the key to writing good romance, but that is very helpful to writing healthy romance for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but no, the key to writing good romance is to understand the story the structure. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. Yes. The beats of romance. That's the key to writing it to understand, um, you know, what the audience is going to expect the the rising action of the romance, the pullback. That's the key to, to writing it well. Um, but um, the key to writing healthy romance, one of them is very much respect. Um uh, uh, okay, one second. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jenna is full. I, I'm the worst person to have, like, I can keep like someone else's secret. Or, you can, I, but your own. Mm -mm. I am terrible. <laughs> I want to tell all the things. Like, I could never be a mysterious woman because I'm the person who, like, meets you and it's like, hey, guess what? I have PTSD. You know? Like, yeah. I'm just like, I can't, I can't, I can't keep anything secret. I've got so much going on right now. And part of the reason that I am not doing well is because I cannot just shout it from the rooftops. But I know. I know. Because then you would have, like, your, bo your body would be feeling the feeling, but then the outside world would be, like, happy like congratulating you yeah so it's like it's it's a i i get what your body's doing where it's like i feel really happy and really good but everyone else is not talking about this thing so i will panic now and it's like yeah. no no wait <laughs> it's I, called having a secret and it's okay for a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i'm just so bad at it like i'm the worst Plot twist, Jenna writes a mystery book. Oh, that would be cool be if you wrote a mystery book. I would like it if you wrote a mystery The book. mystery of Jenna's secret. <laughs> page one, it's like, okay, let me just tell you. That would well, her. I okay, can't, let me I just tell you. I tell you something. <laughs> don't, don't tell anyone else, though. I have to tell them. <laughs> tantric secrets? What the fuck? But anyway, guys. What is tantric? Uh, all I know is tantric sex, so I don't know. So the secret is, right? Exactly. Woven okay. together. No. I, all I know is tantric sex is sex that takes like a really long time. Oh. I don't have the patience. That is not. People who practice Buddhist and Hindu meditation may also practice tantric sex as a way to weave the physical with the spiritual. That sounds beautiful. And you're like, this sounds long and boring. Well, they do. They do it for like hours and hours and oh, hours. That's... And I'm just thinking like all the friction and like, you know, like I had the orgasm. I'm good. You know, like. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, okay, I need to not talk about myself like that. Like, I, I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours doing that. Like, I got a life. Come on, tell me that I'm wrong. You're not wrong. But like, also, I can see why if someone's doing it as a spiritual practice, like no judgment. You yeah. Know? I know, I know. I'm, I'm saying like I'm not trying to yuck someone's yum. No, no, no. I know, the, I know. But it's like the it's, brain. Um, it kind of reminds me of like Kai Choice. Um, he did he did a stand up um, thing where it's like um, uh, cis women or doesn't even female at birth people. I don't remember which one he said, but he was like can experience an orgasm for 30 minutes and you just have to watch his stand-up uh -huh. special because it's really good it's on youtube uh -huh. um but uh it look up like kai um choice uh youtube special uh, mm -hmm. but or comedy special but it's so funny because then he was like it's like does anyone else feel like that is the worst thing that can possibly happen <laughs> He did it like so. I know that's called something in comedy where like you're expecting to be like, doesn't that sound amazing? But he was like, doesn't that sound like horrifying and really scary and like something's <laughs> wrong if that happens? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, it, it's mm -hmm. just like, you know, it, it's great. But then after a certain point, it's like, aren't you hungry? <laughs> I'm don't, sorry. Like, don't answer hungry for something else, you know? <laughs> uh. That is so sweet, but that is not how I am at all. <laughs> I feel like that's that how I own it. That is how I am. Yep. Though. Because I told Jen, I was like, I got you something. It's a cover for your Kindle. And it's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. And I do that with my husband all the time. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. So I've been like, I really like slime. I've been like super fixated on textures of slime. I'm very excited. My slime was supposed to come today and it didn't and it's coming tomorrow. It's okay if plans <laughs> change is what I keep telling myself. It's okay that plans change, but everything about today changed when it wasn't supposed to. But anyway, I feel like um, I, I like got him and me and the Babo like each a special slime. Hi. And I was like, I bought slime and it's, it's going to come in like two weeks and uh, here, here's what they are. And he's like, Thank you. But also, like, can we have, like, some surprise? I'm like, I can't handle this. Right. I love that, though. I think that's so cute. See, um, I'm, like, a very nervous gift giver because I'm very, like, like, my, I love receiving gifts, but mm -hmm. I get anxious giving gifts. I get that. 
because I'm one of those people where I think like, what do they need? And yeah. I'm like, well, but I know that they don't want something that they need, but I want to give them something useful because I'm the kind of person who I show, I, I appreciate receiving love as gifts, but I show my love through acts of service. So my mind goes to what do they need for a gift? So like Cliff, like at one time I got him a massage chair and it was really oh. expensive and he loved it, but I got it because he needed that, you yes. know, yes. like I'm not the person who's going to buy him a gift that's like a spa Thing. you know what I mean yeah. like so so I get nervous giving gifts because my first thought will be like well you know they said their vacuum cleaner broke but no one wants a <laughs> vacuum cleaner as a gift you know so oh I God. get nervous so I usually give people gift cards because I love getting gift cards because mm -hmm. then I get to buy whatever I want you know mm -hmm. but then some people hate gift cards they're like it's so impersonal it's like I'm giving you money so you can buy what you want that is more personal than help anything. me help you right <laughs> Jeez. No, but that's anywho. um, yeah, that's funny because my, my the way I actually it's a very very difficult for me to give gifts. I don't give them often or frequently or on time for anything. So I'm really surprised that you got a birthday present that is atypical. Just so you know, <laughs> be doubly grateful. <laughs> that's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. But but that's how it sounded. I didn't mean it like that. But I'm just like I'm really bad at giving gifts, and it, it makes me anxious a lot of the time. So I show my love through acts of service as well, mm -hmm. but more through like household chores. But maybe that's just because I'm around my husband the most or something. Right. No, but I do that for Babo too, where I'm just like, look, I laid out all your favorite toys in a row so that when you wake up, you're looking at all your favorite toys. Like that's like the shit I do. But right. then receiving wise, I like words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so much. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I yeah. totally get it. Like it's the, it, people always think it's the same both ways, but it's not like it's not. I don't for me like I don't necessarily need acts of service because I like I can do it myself. I'm very much like I do it myself, you know. Uh, but uh, but I love doing that for other people, and that's how I show my like friendship love is like oh, let me help you build your website or like let mm. me show you how to put you know put your book on. Oh, Amazon. like whenever I was flipping the fuck out. Let and me design you know, your like, merch. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're like here's your merch, slightly misspelled, but here. <laughs> I'm, just kidding, I'm just kidding. What, what, what was it again? Like Spocky Soul or something? It was like Spooey Soul. Spooey. Spooey. It was Spooey Soul. Okay, okay. Let's get uh. a couple more questions. <laughs> but yeah. Do you guys have any good tips for setting aside time for your creative work, especially any you develop during a really busy, stressful time other than the sprints? That was going to be my example is creating sprints. writing sprints. That's uh -huh. how I do. Yeah. Just, or just like literally going through my schedule and I'll see a day. Like, for example, like tomorrow, the yeah. only thing I have going on tomorrow is therapy at 2 p.m. So I'm like, okay, tomorrow can be a writing day. You know, like excellent. I, I'm very yeah. excited about your writing days. Yay. Today was going to be one too, but then all the video stuff happened. And, you know, yeah, that's fair. But your video is gold. Thank you. Forgive my ignorance, but is it harmful for characters to have stereotypical names like Rajesh for an Indian man or Maria for a Latina, for example? Well, the thing is, I think you're miss construing stereotypical with or common common because yeah. maria is just an extremely popular name yeah like it's it's not a stereotypical name it's i know several marias you yeah, know i live same. in a i live in an area that's very um south asian and east asian and La latino so i see mm -hmm. a lot of you know there's a lot of common names just like when you meet a lot of white people they're going you know john like a, a white people of a certain age group, John, Michael, Chris, Matt, you know, mm -hmm. like there are certain names that are very common. Um, yeah. So I don't think it's harmful. Um, there are some names that are harmful to keep in mind, but it's not because uh, it's like, because it's like, so um, for black folks, if you have a black, I'm not saying black people cannot have these names. It's just more so like someone giving the person the name. It would be like, um, Maddie for a woman or Jim or Jimmy for a guy who's black. Like, don't do that. And uh -huh. then um, I'm trying to, I had, oh, I had another example in my mind. Oh my gosh. It was for something else. Oh, I, it's gone. But, but there are certain ones that are like, it doesn't mean that a black person who was named that, like, it's fine. Like, that's fine. But if someone is writing We're a character in, yeah. and naming the person on their behalf, there's like a different flavor to that. But exactly. yeah, I don't yeah. know of any, like, I would just like do research on like what 
like what certain names mean because also i i take way too long picking out names and it doesn't mean that it can't be like like my character's name is angela i know a ton mm. of angelas so like yeah. there's like tons of angelas but it means mm. angel so yeah. i just wanted her to have that name for example i mean on the sicilian side of my family there mm -hmm. are so many tonys you know tony oh. is just a well-known italian name you know yeah so the only thing that I would say, besides keeping in mind certain names are off limits, is um, if every character in the name, especially every person of character, person of character, person of color mm -hmm. has like a common name. Like if, you know, um, you know, if every uh, Middle Eastern guy is named Muhammad and then you got Maria, like if they all have the very common name, it's just going to seem like you didn't do research. Yeah. But if, if it's just a couple of people, like for, you know, like if a couple of people have a common name, it's because it's a common name. It's not harmful. And I'm saying this as a, you know, Latin woman, you know, I know a million Marias, you know, like mm -hmm. I know like Jose, Chewy, you know, <laughs> like there's certain mm -hmm. names that you just see a lot, you know, mm -hmm. um, Jesus, um, Guillermo, those are very common around here. I like there's the name Guillermo. I love I it now because of. The oh, because of what we do in the shadows. I've yeah. always loved the word, name Guillermo, but do you know it's William? Like the the English equivalent is William. I love it. I just yeah. love it. So, so so yeah. I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's it's they're common. It's not a, a stereotype. Would be um, my name is Maria and I am feisty Latin lover. Like that's yeah, that, that, that would be the stereotype. It's like okay, so you did no research, right? <laughs> so you like know. you're just you're just chewing up and spitting out like the stereotypes got it <laughs> and i don't agree that uh i i don't agree that it's lazy um it would only be lazy if all the characters had very common names yeah but to have one or two with a common name is just a common name to me that's or, just realism you know yeah that is realistic also like with intentionality behind it would be helpful to like because it's like oh i named this character this or that because of whatever reason like you'll know mm-hmm mm -hmm. Anywho, I think we, right. yeah, we're we're finishing up here. Uh, every, uh, uh, my goodness, Iona, where can everyone find you? Let me... <laughs> I love how you're like, I give up. Ah, she did was... thing so much today. Yeah, okay. she just she just wants all the attention. She's so just sweet. a baby. But you can say tell everyone where to follow you while Butters listens. Oh, yes, yes, you can follow me at Creepycore and Folklore on TikTok and Instagram and um on youtube um not really the, the one i'm most active on is instagram but i've been like kind of slow with being on there just because of like the health things that are going on with me right now and i'm planning for them but now you know all about fun gallbladder organ things <laughs> aren't you so lucky um and then you can buy my book ashes it's available in paper book paperback and ebook options on amazon and it's available on audiobook through audible and um oh and you can book me for a crystal ball reading um and that's at my website creepycore and folklore.com and i think that's everything and you can check out other things i have for sale there too like merch and stuff yes and buy ashes i demand it i demand of thee buy that book because it's so good everyone has been reading it in cyborg central and i know it's so interesting there's been a lot of new readers lately there's a bunch in cyborg central everyone so far has cried i'm very happy about i this. love seeing my it screen. i just see the person like oh my gosh i just finished and i'm like, I'm like ah, cry with me. my favorite is whenever they're like i just have to digest this and then like days go by and they're like i'm still thinking about it <laughs> And you're like, wow. <laughs> Very hydrated now. <laughs> Anywho. So um, Sorry, you go. That's okay. You follow me here on YouTube. You can see me and Butters here on YouTube. We will do live streams. What days? Mondays. We do live streams on Mondays and we do videos on Wednesdays. Please, please, please watch Wednesday's video. Oh, yes. Yeah, see, Butters wants you to, too. I can't wait. I can't wait. To, I can't wait for everyone to see. I think it's gonna get kind of like I think it's gonna blow up a bit because I hope so because amazing. I'm gonna get demonetized, so it's gotta be worth <laughs> watch something. it while you can. Right? <laughs> no, it's kidding. Seriously, and I love it, it. it was so much fun, and I want to make more of them because it's like give it's giving me like something to look forward to when I read these shitty books. You know, it's mm -hmm. like a shitty book. It's like it was all for something, and now right. I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> exactly. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, getting paid for it. But anywho, yeah. Yes, watch Wednesday's video. Be sure to like this stream. Be sure to ring the bells. Follow my channel and ring the bell and buy all of my books. Um, 
yeah, you can get them at all major retailers and in all formats. Uh, the Savior's Champion, the Savior's Sister, and Shut Up and Write the Book. And um, what was I going to say? And uh, the Savior's Army is on its way. Woo! And we're going to be back on Monday with more live streams. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Butters is so excited. Yes, you want a live stream, huh? You love these streams. Yes, she does. And also follow me on Instagram if you want to see lots of pictures of Butters because uh, I love sharing her beautiful face. Her. her beautiful face. Okay, Butters, say, say bye. Bye.